What is going on, everybody? You did, did one without me again. We talked about this last week. It works out because you were done and we doing the... <laughs> What's going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Ghost Welcome in the Night. Welcome to the, web, the YouTube channel where people finger pop each other's assholes and then taste it like a lollipop at a fucking Charlie, Cho- Charlie and the Chocolate Factory convention. We are Ghost in the Night. This is episode 149. Yes. I am Phil. Travis is the good-looking man, young man sitting next to me. That if you're shaved in like fucking four days. If you're watching on YouTube, you get to see our pretty faces. If you're listening to it, you just get to hear our docile tones. But she sells seashells by the seashore. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe, like, hit the like button. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck of a woodchuck could fuck good? I do not know. Do not care. But tonight we are doing Ed Gein. We are <coughs> tickling the true crime nipple no do not do it do not do it there goes <laughs> there goes all of our Watch shit we just dropped to like a thousand fucking viewers now no, but we are doing ed gein the infamous ed gein <laughs> travis is going to take the lead on this because he has a hard on for this guy. hard uh you know me true crime is just true crime for me oh wait anybody joining us who's drinking we got three Wait, I'll wait for you to pick it up. Three, two, one. Hey, at least you didn't squirt all over me this time. Fuckers. All right, yeah. We are doing Ed Gein, or Travis is doing Ed Gein. I'm, just, gonna, I'm just doing a little commentary. Like I said, I believe this is episode 149, I believe. It is it's episode said. 149. We are getting to 150. Since we're going to have to do a... Oh, before we get started, uh, Halloween. I say we, oh, I was thinking about this, by the way. What? You're talking about episode, uh, whatever the fucks. Whatever the I fuck? think we should necronomapod it. What do you mean? If, if this thing keeps going, which I hope it does, if we get to 500 episodes, tattoos. Okay. I'm down. On our foreheads. Uh, I'm not down. I'm going to get a dick, and the veins are going to spell out G-I-T-N. No. I would oh, not. speaking of I G-I-T-N little... and growth. Yeah. My dick is still small, but my ideas are large. I have some young women that I have this plan to make them, well, make not make them, have them make TikTok videos for us that we can upload between clips on TikTok. And I was like, yo, it's easy. Just do the stupid fucking dance things, but wear corpse paint like a black metal band. But I was thinking... Halloween. Did it hurt? Halloween's on a Sunday. <clears throat> Ooh. <laughs> Maybe we should do a Halloween special in costume. <laughs> yes. In costume on Halloween. If we can work out, a, you know, get back to our Sunday schedule. I can, think, I, I'll be fat, can I be fat penny wise? Like half dollar you can be wise? Whatever the hell you want. But we'll do costumes and do a Halloween theme. I'm going to be Kim Jong un. So I'm just going to show up. <laughs> You do kind of look like him. I'm just going to wear a green shirt. Oh, Gonzo's, Gonzo's here. Brian's here. We got a bunch of people. Gonzo said, how young are we talking? They're, they're co-workers of mine. Fuck off. It's not that weird. All right. But we are doing Ed Gein. Travis is going to get And one that. of them's got like fucking 14,000 fucking followers on TikTok already. She was like, I don't know how I had that many. I was like, because you're a fucking girl. And creepy dudes are all over TikTok. Have you not watched your mom's house? Have well, you seen the shit that Christina where are, P finds? Where do the creepy, where are the <coughs> creepy girls hang out? So we can get on there. Fet life, fat life, fet life, fat life. It's a it's a fetish website. Oh, where you can be like, I like to get walked by a dog, and the guys will be like, I'll walk you like a dog. My name's Clarence. I live at home with both parents. My parents have a real good marriage. Okay, Eminem. I went I to Cranbrook. That's a I private saw school. Mile, damn it. Ba-da, 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 suck my dick. All right. Go ahead and get this party started. I think oh. we don't have no business. Thank you to everybody. Oh, subscribe, share, all that happy shit while you're in here. We greatly appreciate it. For the audio listeners, be sure if you want to join us live, get in the chats. We do these Monday at 8 o'clock, oh, give oh, or take. Oh. Let, me ju- let me start the train. Let me start the train. Close the goddamn chat before I butt fuck you into submission, cellular device. I'm fucking fiery. He gets fiery on these true crime episodes. 
He's wary. Weary. He's weary. Okay. I didn't start the train. Somebody beat me to it, but like the video. Yeah, get. I'm going to go. You get started. I got to go get some paper towels. We got condensation. Condensation. Sation. Sation. Okay, tonight's topic of conversation is condensation. Condensation is a scientific situation where when you have a certain level of temperature difference between two things, you have a watery buildup. Of <laughs> I swear to God, I hate you sometimes. All right. Oh, Ed Gein. Buckle up, Buttercups. We're about to... Killers. F- we're about to finger your Is there minds. any Satan in this? I didn't find any. Damn it. It's unfortunate. So, yes, again, we're talking about... Edward Theodore Gein. I gotta catch up. As uh, Gonzo ruined everybody's surprise, he was the inspiration for Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. He was the uh, uh, an inspiration for Norman Bates from Psycho. Yes. He was an inspiration for Buffalo Bill from uh, Silence of the Lambs. Yes. <laughs> and arguably a shitload of other people. There's, wow. there's, I, I find inklings of Ed Gein in um, what's his name? Whatever, fine is that his last name? The guy from Red Dragon. Oh yeah, uh, with the whole mom thing. Mm-hmm. Put her teeth in his mouth. Yeah, yes. But anyway, so yes, again, Edward Gein, the butcher of Plainfield, the Plainfield Ghoul, or the Godfather of Gore, nope. who I think they should give that nickname to Rob Zombie now. Personally, just my opinion. I love Rob Zombie. He makes good, phenomenal fills. Fill, 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 fill. Okay, now, sit down, kids. It's story time with Travi and Phil. I wish we had a cut scene where it was like, like the more you know, but our version. Well, you know, if we get a producer one day, if we start making money. I actually have an idea for somebody to do that. We'll too. have two Couple cameras people. set up and we'll just go. Go Wayne's World. It. I want to get uh, the next thing I want to purchase technology wise for this show. I've decided is an auto tune button, so I can auto tune myself w- at any point, and be like, "And the killer ate the penis." Actually, I almost bought a mix. There's a mixer that you can kind of have sound effects on, change your voice in mid. Don't have a drum pad on it because I'll just start making beats in the middle of this shit. We, we don't get shit done anyway, so that's fair. That's not. That's that's not untrue. All right, so, continue. Here we go. Buckle up, Buttercup. It's going to get nasty. Bitches. So, Edward Theodore Gein was born August 27th, in 1906, in La Crosse, Wisconsin, which I think I've actually been there. Why? I'm sorry. My ex fiance's family is from Wisconsin. I'm sorry. She lived in La Crosse. Is she, is, she's not, is she in the live stream now? What do you think? Probably. Well, she showed up one time, didn't she? No. No, that was my last girlfriend. Oh, okay. Anyway. Uh, after her. Well, she was from Wisconsin? Yeah. You dodged a bullet there? Yeah, she was cool. It's Wisconsin. They're all fucking crazy. Well, so was I. That's true, too. Nope. I'll take Continue. that. It was a 50-50 breakup. Continue. Well, I didn't know it at the time. I got older and realized it was definitely a 50-50. So, Ed was the second of two boys, his older brother, Henry George Gein. Strapping young lad. I can't... Don't take my word on that. Never saw a picture of him. Don't go fucking care. So... Born to father George and mother Augusta. She liked chocolate. Not a pretty woman. No. no. And I don't need to see a picture to know that. She Anybody looked, that was, had the name of Augusta? Ugly woman. She looked like a ninja turtle in a job of the hut mask. That's fucking ugly. Yeah. That's fugly. Yeah. It's, it's, she's something. You are something else. Now, um, just a little uh, toss in. Yes, we'll get to that. Um, just a little toss in just because it, the, the fuckedness goes back further than some might know their father, George Ed's father, George's whole family was swept away and killed in a flash flood when he was three years old. And, uh, except for him, right? Yeah. Lucky. I don't know how the fuck that one works out What they're like, honey, come look at the cow. It's flow. The the three year old is smart enough to find higher ground. Yeah. So then what happens? George becomes a fucking angry alcoholic basically that's that's what you get when your family gets swept away in a flash flood <laughs> these are those moments where the people that listen to our podcast need to it. watch it oh fuck so 
Uh, Augusta. Augusta. Augustus. No, don't drink the chocolate water, honey. You fat little fuck. Now you're stuck in the tube again, just like you were when mommy birthed you. You were born at 14 pounds, 6 ounces, and only 9 inches long. <laughs> 9 inches. You look like a juju bee, but a human. Anyway, uh, Augusta was the child of some super hardcore fire and brimstone Lutheran parents. Damn Lutheran. Which, I don't know if anybody follows any of this type of shit. That always ends up well. Crazy religious parents always raise normal kids. Oh, there's a theme, and I, we will get to it when once you get into this, because I'm sure you're going to hit on some of this shit with her and some of the shit. Oh, she dude, did like with the it. first yeah. like four and a half pages about of yeah. this is just about his childhood. Half my notes are about his childhood because it all just kind of right. makes sense once you get into it. But so uh, let's just say a little foreshadowing. Not a shocker. He turned into no, what he was. Not at all. So I'm um, here to help. So these two get married. I, I couldn't find anything on how they met or anything like that. I I did listen to another podcast and I ChristianMingle.com. <laughs> it's fucking silly gooses. But Alcoholics Anonymous. What? Shout out Necronomapod. But I do actually agree with Ian from Necronomapod. I have a feeling it just happened to be a religious thing. Like they happened to go to the same church or some shit like Isn't that. Isn't that how everybody just, met in the early late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds? If it wasn't arranged. What's up, Izzy? Um, so, after they got married and shit, <laughs> this worked out really well overall because uh, Augusta Augusta could not fucking stand her husband, George, who was a straight-up alcoholic, couldn't keep a job. He did all kinds of shit. So he tried farming. Marriage. He tried tanning hides. Runs in the family, apparently. We'll come back to that. Like, just couldn't keep Force a job. Couldn't, it. Wouldn't stop. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That was a pretty good one. So, um, but because on top of all this, it just got worse because she refused to get divorced because religion. Well, from what you just said, she hated him from the beginning. Why'd the hooker get married anyway? Because cause it was the fucking 30s. That's what you did. You got married and you had kids and then you ended up like this because... On top of that, Augusta would only uh, ride George's knob strictly for the purpose of making another child. And her, him and his, Ed and his brother were like five years apart, so we can imagine how often that was. So you're telling me there was no roadhead in the Model T? Is what you're telling me? I wonder if it was a Model T back then. Or the ho- horse and buggy, whatever. I don't know. I mean, apparently they did pretty well for themselves overall. We'll yeah, get to that, that as well. Money-wise? Yeah. That's we'll good. get to that as well. So, uh, yeah, their relationship eventually just became a physical relationship because they would basically slap box the holy shit out of each other. And there has been talk and rumor of them slap boxing the shit out of each other. And then eventually her just... Ah! Onto the ground like a Jerry Springer chick, and then just praying aloud for that George would die, because <laughs> that's what Jesus teaches us. So wait a minute, they were slap boxing. It so was they, like a slap fight. I they, guess like I, they were girl he never, like punched the fuck out of her. They were girl they fighting. Were just, yeah, which I guess which you know it's the it's the forties. I'm sure that's fine. They're just like oh they're cute. Or, <laughs> Look at them slapping the shit out of each other. People in Wisconsin, guys in Wisconsin, not know what a closed fist is it does more damage well if you hit with a fist it's hey, different i don't approve of beating women that is <laughs> there's two things i don't know you don't beat women you don't beat kids yeah but if you're gonna do it don't half-ass it and slap it go balls to the wall so the more back you, to the story the more you know so back to the story um so you marry a man that can't keep a job. You can't fucking stand him. You pray for him to die. He drinks nonstop. He hits you. So what's the best course of action here? Have With all kids. this happy days, flower and sunshine shit going on. Have, have another kid. Yeah. What they call an anchor baby. These days. Trust me, I know. How'd that work out? Uh, Sitting here next to you. Pretty shitty. So uh, Augusta, when Ed was born, was um, praying for a daughter. Also a good start to all of this. Um, but his mom vowed that 
when he was born that Ed wouldn't end up like other men. And mission <laughs> accomplished. Yeah, he turned out real. He's, you're you're raised a winner, Augie. Good job. You what if that was her nickname, Augie? Buxom brolic bitch. Hi, this is my wife. I don't Augie. think she had a nickname. You would have to have fucking friends to have a nickname. That is true. She hated everybody. So anyway, around or in 1909, George was the owner of a store, but eventually ended up just chugging the whole all the liquor inventory until Augusta took over and took control slash ownership of the store. And uh, in 1911, so he was getting high on his own supply. Yeah, which apparently she she must have run it pretty well because they were doing pretty well which, for themselves. You know, I heard I this, and this is actually kind of impressive. I'm gonna be serious now that a woman took over a a, a business, business of her what? own in 1911. Right, exactly. A year before the fucking Titanic sank. Near, but did far, it? But did it? Keep George out the bar. <laughs> How long did you work on that? I didn't. Oh, that just came out of my asshole. Up. Yeah, oh, that was pretty good. Thank you. No, but that uh, seriously, that is first singles dropping next month. That was actually impressive. That 1911. I was thinking like 1560, but 1911. Yeah, I mean, like misogynist as it may be, like times were times, things were things back then. Like that is that's not very fucking common. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the people of that that location at that time would say uh, burn it down she's exactly. a fucking witch or definitely not patron that place yeah I'm, that's impressive props to augie that's the only prop she's getting for this rest of this episode for me augie augie coxon free no she there's no cocks no cock no cock stop so anyway in 1913 uh augie bought a farm like their first farm it was a little guy. I don't remember the exact acreage or hectare edge of it. I've been drinking. I don't want to hear hectare. But then in 1914, the family moved to a bigger 155-acre farm in Plainfield, Wisconsin. Now, I cannot conform, confirm nor deny the existence of a mansion in Wisconsin upon the land that this farm sat upon. Okay. But... I can confirm that they'd never visited a log cabin somewhere in Aspen. Girl, it ain't nothing, Teddy Payne. I can change your last name. What's happening? <laughs> Moving on. Thank now, you. Now, Augusta used the farm to help her further isolate her kids from the outside world fucking entirely. Like, these boys were only allowed to go to school, and they had to come straight back to school. And then they worked on the farm, and they could go into town, but they went into town with their, I'm assuming, just their mom. I would imagine George was suckling the teat of Jack Daniels. Well, because if he, the, <laughs> he went to town with the boys. He was going to sell them for fucking brandy. Exactly. Or just be sitting at the saloon. Yeah. Which. Swinging doors, all the whole fucking nine yards, you know. Just call me George. No. George Jefferson, moving on up. George Jetson moved all the way up. His boy, Elroy. We, His daughter, this bitch. <laughs> I don't know. I never remember the daughter's name. Neither do I. I know the wife was Jane. Yes. The daughter was, I don't know, fucking Swamp Misha or Beth Ann. Some stupid shit. Beth Ann? I don't fucking know. All right, continue. I'm sorry. I, I, got, you, I got you off on a tangent. I'm sorry. So, um... Again, the, the boys weren't allowed to do shit. And along this whole time, fucking Judy. There you go. Uh, this whole time, George just continued to get shlamma lama ding donged and physically abuse the family due to his uh, situation of just being a virtual, vir <laughs> verbal punching bag for his uh, <laughs> melted Easter bunny chocolate of a wife. Well, let's... In George's defense, she was very ver verbal, abusive. Obviously, after two kids, she definitely quit putting out. The oh, man yeah. was drunk, not getting laid. What did they expect to fucking happen? God, can you imagine what she smelled like? I just threw up a little in my mouth. I bet she took off her... her she didn't wear underwear. She wore fucking... What were they called back in the day? I don't remember. Some dumb shit. It was just like it was just like somebody just kicked over a fucking like a turtle tank that you haven't cleaned in five years. 
Leonardo's just over there fucking roundhouse kicking his way out of her labia. Okay, okay, you've lost me. <laughs> Continue. Okay. Judy, so, appa- Judy was the daughter's name. I know, I already said that. Shut up. Oh, well, fuck, I'm behind. <laughs> fuck you. Okay, so Augusta would... Get the podcast, bitch. Augusta would read the boys' scripture and preach about the immorality of the world around them and the evils of drinking. I'll get behind her on the evils of drinking part, given the situation. Reach for it. Reach for it. There we go. Um, I'll give her the evils of drinking, given the home situation. I can get behind that one. Um, I even wrote down. Um, I don't think that they needed their mom or the Bible to tell them that. I'm pretty sure they could just wake up in the morning. The first time daddy was drunk and landed a right cross. <laughs> or I'm sorry, not a right cross, a right slap. Yeah. That was my last. It's like those rushing slap off videos. You know, that should have been the first clue that drinking was the devil's juice. Right. The devil's semen. Oh, and she would also preach to the boys about how, other than herself, women were naturally promiscuous instruments of the devil. Women are instruments of the devil? Okay. She's got me. Okay. She's winning me over now. That's why you're single. That's not why I'm single. All right, whatever, Steven Tyler. Jaded. I will walk off this podcast. Anyway, I'm so drinking. This is another. I'm getting some devil semen. Fireball for your audio audio listeners. He's not drinking Fireball. Don't listen to him. So, uh, she allegedly. She set aside time every day to read the boys' scripture from the Old Testament and the Book of Revelations, focusing on death, murder, and divine retribution. That's always good. And Ed had, like, a weird relationship and affinity with his mom. I mean, like, it it was fucking weird, but it's understandable with how she raised him and given some of the things about him that we will come up later on. But... During all this time while they're in school, he was getting bullied a lot by his peers because he had, he, he had a a very effeminate way about him for a young lad. Right, and the lazy eye kind of thing. but Saggy baggy eyes? Yes, but from some of the pictures, it just had a... It's almost like his it eye... It just looked like it wasn't... It wasn't a lazy eye. It was more of a... Just a... His eye, one eyebrow was a little... Like he was yeah, cock, he only got he hit on cock-eyed. one side with the fucking ugly stick. Right. Maybe which well, is funny because you see some George pictures of him. He looks like an old trash bag, and then there's like once he's in prison, he looks so much better. He looks like a fucking like a backup character from Peaky Blinders. Well, he was taking a shower and getting you know. He wasn't eating pork and beans because apparently he ate pork and beans every day. I don't see a problem with that. I do. I need flavor in my life. A little sriracha. I don't think they had sriracha back then, or Frank's Red Hot. How did I put that shit on everything? I do too, but how do these fuckers survive? How do we make it past? How the fuck? Maybe did... they just put dirt and everything, or spit. Oh, so anyway, demon semen. Uh, and on top of the effeminate behavior that got him bullied, Ed was just a weird little fucker, and he did weird little fucker shit, and had like weird personal mannerisms. Like he would just randomly laugh to himself, like <laughs> as if like as if he was sitting there telling himself jokes that nobody else was hearing. Well, I do it too. In the middle of class, I, I mean, I do too. But to an extent, it's okay. Well, to, past a certain point, it does get fucking weird. Here's how bad I am. Like <laughs> driving in the car, I am always talking to myself. And when oh, I yeah. talk, when I talk to myself, I'm verbally talking to myself. Yeah, sometimes. Thank, thank God for the invention of the Bluetooth, you know, headphone. Now people just think I'm talking on the phone. Yeah. When oh, I, Tyler makes a good point. I also noticed some similarities between Ed Gein and Bobby Boucher. Good job, Tyler. Yeah, I was thinking about that today when I was listening to just some random podcast just to beat all information into my head. So, uh, Augusta was such a crazy bitch that she would actually punish Ed if he tried to make friends with his peers. But I heard a story. Didn't she? he come home one day and say his friend from school, and she lashed out and... Yeah, dude, like she, it, it was just not a thing. She would not. She was not having it. Mama Bear was not having none of that I mean, shit. I have kids. I prayed for them to have freaking right? friends. Get so away I, from me. I don't even have kids, and I want them to get away from God. me already. 
Enough of God. the questions. Why? 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 But side note, um, all this aside, he did apparently do well in school and excelled in reading specifically. He was not a stupid man. No. Not he does some stupid shit eventually. Or edgy and chic, depending on how you look at it. But he had, foreshadowed, he had some great inspiration. Oh yeah. Which we've talked we these people always make an appearance on this podcast. Yep. They'll come up. <laughs> So uh, when Henry got old enough, eventually in his older teenagers, he finally stood up to his dad and he put an end to the physical abuse in the home. So after that, George just pickled himself to death like Nick Cage and fucking leaving Las Vegas. And like, that's just all he did. It's just like, you're not going to hit us anymore. Okay. Clunk, 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 clunk. I was slapping. What was it really hitting? Still. But um, so <laughs> after a little while after that, the brothers had to end up taking care of their dad. Um, from 1937 to 1940 due to health complications due to his alcoholism. And George died on April 1st, 1940 of heart failure caused by his alco- alcoholism at the age of 66. He had a good run. Right? That's what I'm saying. It's like 30 years longer than I plan on making it. I mean, 30 years of good hard <laughs> drinking. Right? So after the death of their father, Henry and Ed started working odd jobs as handymen to help with the family's living expenses. As young men would do, you would hope. You know, yeah. even if your mom's a fucking psychopath, like she, she's like, she's like the motherly version of Kathy Bates from fucking uh, Misery. Yes, that's what she makes me think of. Fuck Stephen King, I hate that movie. It's too. It's it's fucking. It's one of the few movies that I. Oh, I it's can't terrifying. Watch. I mean, the whole when the I watched it about a month or two ago, it was on. Yeah, and I clicked. It was just flipping around. And every time I that movie's on and I find it, it's at that one fucking scene. When she fucking takes the Board, four by four. And right. the, yeah. It's almost scary it happens. Every time I find it on on television, it's that scene. Yeah. And here's how freaking stupid I am. I watch it, and it freaks me out every time. I mean, brilliant acting. Yeah. So, carrying on. Moving on. So, um... Ed would also often babysit for the neighbors of the town and was apparently very good at it and got along with children better than adults. No shit. He was robbed of a childhood. Therefore, without a childhood, the problem with not having a childhood and why people end up fucked as adults is because without a childhood, you, it's kind of hard to become, an to adult. learn how to become a functioning adult. I mean, there's numerous examples of this yeah when you have michael child, jackson michael jackson is the top you know yeah. that you when your childhood the Corey's, i think Corey Heyman, and cory feldman to an extent to an extent but Macaulay not, Culkin. i uh, but at least he's now now he's come around but, i remember when he was on the jordan uh, joe rogan podcast and before they even brought the video up from the episode he was like you're surprisingly normal and Macaulay Culkin was like i know right <laughs> it's the funniest shit ever didn't he date uh mina kunis for a while I don't okay. pay attention to that I'm shit. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm tra- sidetracking the podcast. Um. So, and then and then on uh, the brothers as a duo were also, like, mostly known and considered to be a reliable, honest pair in their within their community, which is kind of shocking. You'd, you'd think that everybody would be like, those fucking weirdos that have lived here for 30 years and nobody fucking knows them? No, I'm good. That's my kind of people. Yeah, right. But anyway. So, around this time when they're adults, dad's dead, you know, all that good jolly shit, uh, Henry started to worry about Ed's unusual attachment to their mom and would, like, directly make it a point to shit-talk his mother to Ed, which left Ed very hurt and just... Confused. And in, 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 in shock. Right. Which... His, uh, the mama's boy. A uh, mama's boy completely. Which I mean, even to, the, like, to the extreme, even without being a mama's boy or daddy's boy or whatever, like it's it's still it's not surprising, like if you live with and don't like openly fucking hate your parent, you don't want to hear somebody running their mouth about them, especially right. your brother or your sister. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you're right. probably gonna get a little fucking butt hurt about it and right. have a feel a certain type of way about it. But you know, we'll just want to see how that works out for him. <laughs> So, jump ahead to May 16th, 1944. Henry and Ed are burning some uh, weird marsh shit on their property. And that fire got a little out of control. Got a little little hot. Got a little spicy. 
So at that point, the fire department got uh, involved. They got the fire under control, and they left. So a town member came with a bucket, basically what you're telling me. Yeah. Okay. They did it just like uh, Tammany and what's-his-fuck from Gangs of New York when they went to put out that fire, and they just started a big fucking brawl between the two fire departments. Yes. Shit was hilarious. They're just like, my house, and they're just... (laughs) So, anywho. So that happens, and then I think the next day, Ed reports Henry missing. So they go looking for him, nothing, and after the initial search, they form a search party, and allegedly, from what I heard, read, Ed coincidentally led them directly to the area where Henry's body was found. So accidentally on purpose. Yeah. Okay. Which there were there was bruising on Henry's head, and they said that he died of heart failure. Due to smoke inhalation. Due to smoke or, inhalation. Um, but the Emmys uh, of uh, that, fix, let's just say the Emmys of this time frame in Wisconsin were about as good as the Emmys in Arkansas in the early 90s. Yeah. That's, That's how, medical examiners to anybody who doesn't know. Oh, you layman about. folk. Um, but so, yeah, like we said, the county coroner listed the cause of death as asphyxiation due to smoke inhalation. But let's also throw in the fact that no official investigation or autopsy was ever performed by the authorities. Right. Because it's Wisconsin in the 40s. Right. Why would you? There's more important things. That was my whole thing. Why aren't these boys over there fighting the fucking war? Uh, because Ed had a lazy eye. Because they held all Matt Damon and all his brothers. Well, don't forget Ben Affleck and Josh Harden were over in Hawaii. Don't worry about it. And Tom Hanks was over there. Tom Sizemore. Yes. Vin Diesel. Yes. Uh, a shitload of other people in movies that I can't even remember. Mel Mar- Gibson. Marky from the Mark's Talkers. brother was over in the... Or was that Vietnam? No, Marky Mark's brother. Donnie. Donnie was in the Band of Brothers. Which... Donnie Wahlbeg. Oh, yeah. Oh, fucking uh, uh, Freddie Mercury, that guy. He was in the Pacific. Freddie Mercury? From yeah, the guy Queen? Pl- yeah, the guy that played... No, the guy that played Freddie Mercury. Oh, Oh, yeah. Great actor. Oh, yeah, wonderful he, actor. He was in the Pacific. You ever watch the Pacific? Uh, no, I haven't It's seen a it. Band of Brothers spinoff. Oh, it's really? Fu- fucking nominal. It's so good. For our dorks, he was also in Breaking Bad Part, or Breaking Bad, uh, Twilight Breaking Dawn. Who? Uh, Freddie Mercury, got whatever his name is. Fuck. He played, uh, he was in Breaking Dawn Part 2. Yeah, he's, uh, I don't know. Yeah, you should watch Shame- or Shameless. You should watch fucking, uh. The Pacific. Pacific's fucking right. I mean, he's a brilliant actor. Yeah, he really is. He was in in that movie, what, iRobot? The hacker movie, or hacker TV show on USA, I think? Uh, No, it's a Hulu show, isn't it? Well, it started on- Mr. Robot? Mr. Robot. It started on on USA, but that, you know, they moved to He's fucking fantastic. Oh, fantastic. I'd touch his butthole with my mouth. I mean, and let's be honest, I'm not even a big Queen fan- when I was younger, I, I, they're, they're all right. I'm a Freddie Mercury fan. They had some their guitar player. I can't remember his name. Had some really good riffs, but like I'm a fan of Freddie Mercury's crazy ability to sing back in the day. But you know, growing, he doesn't do it very much. You know, I remember he got a little lazy. I know? remember Live Aid. AIDS killed him. I was a I was I remember Live Aid. I was alive. I was a young kid, so you know I caught the tail end of Queen. You know, in, in the early '90s, you know. If you played sports, you know, we are the champions. Always played, you know. We are the but champions. But I was, ne- I was never, friend. I was never a big Queen fan. I saw. I'm the not movie. a Queen fan of like the the super popular song. Like if I hear Fat Bottom Girls one more time, I'm gonna fucking punch somebody in the bar because it's the only place you fucking hear it. Right. But it, you know, back in the day, it was a bicycle. Good song. Bi- I want to ride my bicycle. But after the movie came out, I kind of started diving into the catalog a little bit more. I am more of a fan of Queen now because of the movie and what an amazing job he did because of that movie. Yeah, it's just like Rush. I feel the same way about Rush. Well, I mean, I have a a boner for Rush from a musical standpoint, period. Like a talent standpoint. But, like, everybody everybody just listens to, like, Tom Sawyer and Limelight and shit. And I'm like, no, they have a fucking phenomenal discography. For a three-piece band? Absolutely. Yeah, they're the best three-piece of all time. Right. It's them, popularity-wise, ZZ Top. 
Oh, he Knight the uh, Smithsonian. Smith Smithsonian. 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 One that, of the uh, guys on that nerd podcast I listen to works at the Smithsonian. Not that anybody cares, but it adds to their legitimacy. So he's a member of the Illuminati. I don't know. I don't think they take guys that nerdy. Okay. They literally will be like, well, I mean, and then he thought it was an ankylosaur. <laughs> okay. Right, continue. We're, oh, we're in the Eddie 40s. Hayes it. So, oh, sorry. Henry died. Which we're, I'll throw that in here because clearly we all know that Ed Gein is going to end up being a murderer of some oh, sort. Spoil, you spoiled it You for said me. it's true crime. What the fuck? What we did, we did, we were doing I an episode was, on somebody that just exclusively stole fucking I thought grape was, big league chew from CVS. I thought this was a domestic violence episode and we were done. With who? Augusta and George. Yeah. That'd be funny. We're just, we get through, we finish where George dies. We'll see you guys next week. We're out. Uh, so. We, I'll throw this one in there because a lot of people theorize that, it, and specifically a writer who I did not write his name down, <laughs> theorized that Henry's death was the quote-unquote Cain and Abel aspect to this whole thing, if you will. Very possible. I mean, imp- I mean, there's a lot of... <clears throat> now, we can't say with 100% certainty that he killed Henry. Yeah. I mean, it is very possible. Smoke inhalation, he fell, hit his head. Could it, there is some explanations? Yeah, for I don't. That. I, I don't see Ed ever having the balls to do that. But it can't rule it out. So whether or not Henry is Ed's first victim is up in the air. I I I kind of think so. I would. I think if nothing else, he had he. I think he had a hand in it somehow. Even if he just donked him on the head with a fucking log, it was like, <laughs> and just like walked away. I mean, if I had to, if you had a gun. You're gonna my- burn now. If you held a sewing machine to my head. Well, and that was the other thing. That was the other yes. detail of the evidence found. He was not burnt. He was not in a burnt area. Right, but. It was, he was close. Close enough with yeah, the smoke. Yeah, like, yeah, with that it, much smoke. Like, yeah, you could asphyxiate right. on the smoke. Like, I'm not ruling that out. But so, what the, throw in this side note story that we both heard on that podcast, but I have corroborated from other uh, reputable sources. Please excuse me. That tasted terrible. Um, a side note on how batshit their mom was. You know this story. After This is after Henry's dead and everything like that. Um, Augusta and Ed went to the home of a man named Smith, who was a neighbor. They went here to buy straw. Now, when they arrived, Smith was in the front yard beating a dog to death. And... Uh, a woman came from the house and tried to yell at him to stop, which he didn't. He continued to beat the dog until it was dead. Yes. Which that's, you know, that's cool. That's totally not worse than anything else we've heard up to this point. Actually, this might, that might be the worst thing we've heard. It's it's fucking awful. But Augusta was upset when they left this scenario and she was not so much upset by the treatment of the dog, but by the fact that a woman came out of Smith's house and Smith was not married to her. And she referred to her as Smith's harlot. Crazy bitch. Yeah. Fuck that dog. That bitch shan't be in there. Where else the, for the fuck else is she supposed to be? Hey, I brought you dinner because you live by yourself and I'm a neighbor. I'm just trying to be kind. Put it in the barn. Get off my porch, bitch. I ain't no man whore. The fuck? How does this shit work? I am. This isn't the bank. You don't have those fucking <laughs> boom things right. where you can fucking just send shit. But this shows, like you said, how crazy this hooker was. Yeah. How much of a religious... I mean, we know, if you listen to this podcast, how much I love the religious fanatics. They, uh, They... Put a spur in my anus like no other. In this, in this story, her behavior, how the story ends, is the reason why I have such a problem with fanatical religious people. True story. Because we all real talk. Anybody who's here, real talk, bro. Anybody who's here regularly, and anybody who knows me knows my personal right. belief system when it comes to religion. If you don't. You'll figure it out. So I was approached by somebody recently, and I just, I I made a joke. Hold on. Is this somebody at work? Maybe. But. 
Okay. I was approached by somebody. Not really approached, but I, I made a joke. I was like, oh, there is a God. And then I was like, I don't believe in that shit. <laughs> and then this person was like, so why don't you believe in God, Travis? And I sat there and gave him a good 90 seconds to two minutes of explanation why I feel the way I feel and what the things that I've learned in my life and what I've seen. You know what this person's retort was from their their holy fucking up high on yonder peak religious background and lifestyle what? you're a funny guy travis i'm glad i met you i was like and that's a fucking issue because he had everybody rebuttal. that wants to fucking hide behind this fucking stupid fucking facade that is religion as far as i'm concerned if you're religious by all means believe in what you want i have nothing in my life and have seen nothing in my life to point me towards any type of religion being real my personal opinion but see, that's where if people. If you get... believe in God and Jesus, that's fucking sick. My only problem with that is the people that believe in Jesus or Buddha or or, or Allah or whatever it is. Oh, do that not mention cannot, that name here. That cannot mention Zozo before we mention. It that. literally means God, but <laughs> but the, the, it, I don't what, want to be beheaded on YouTube. Damn it! That's why. Well, it, it, this, this is the reason why I'm so jaded because of religion is people like her. Is people that like just because I say I don't believe in your religion or I don't believe in your savior or your God, I'm wrong and I'm a bad person and you are then going to take the time to try to shove that down my throat. I'm not doing that to you. I don't bring that shit up until somebody asks me or on a situation like this where this is our podcast. I'm voicing my opinion on Augusta Gein being a fucking crazy fanatical okay. fucking just like dude literally like she wouldn't fuck her husband unless they were making a kid but i bet you if jesus fucking well, took his mandel foot and kicked the door in with his smock she'd just be like straight down just choking on that god dong oh you are so gone travis's uh oh if hell is real i'm going there i, I, I accept that fully I'll have air conditioning. I'm sorry. The word God dong just fucking. I, I, where am I at? I, I lost all train of thought. She gives. He gives Jesus peace a whole new meaning. <laughs> oh, fuck me. I'm going to hell just for listening to you. I also, I also like to com- refer to communion wafers as Jesus. Oh, fuck. Oh, my God. It's like Dane Cook said. He said, let's have some num nums. Oh, okay. Um, and cannibalism is bad, but we can eat the flesh of Christ. Oh, that's what I've said this on a podcast. Um, my, one of the and podcasts. drink his his blood that tastes very similar to shitty cheap Merlot. I'm, I've said it all along. People, Catholics can go bite me when they want to talk about rituals and, you know, occult. Well, see, in my experience, Catholics and, are usually the cooler ones out of the, but, out of the quote unquote Christian realm because communion, Catholicism and Christianity is the same fucking thing. It's just ever so slightly different. Communion is a ritual. It is cannibalism. Magic got fucking bitches hung and burned at the stake and drowned because they weren't even doing it. But Jesus walked on water and turned water into wine, even though walking on water is fucking false. It was, a, but turned water into wine and support. Well, that's that a, magic. That's is a fine. useful motherfucker right there. Oh wait, he also was a fucking zombie. Oh, here we go with the zombie bit. The Bible is the first zombie movie, and the Old Testament is the bloodiest fucking film script ever written. Just look at the fucking Passion of the Christ, although apparently it did work for the demons of Brownsville Road. That that demon did not like that. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it, man? A Mel Gibson movie can fucking well, exercise well, a demon from a house. Well, Mel Gibson... And it didn't involve a cheeseburger or nothing. Well, or you know, Jews. Maybe the demon just didn't like Mel Gibson because he was a racist piece of shit. <gasps> Speaking of racism, oh. I've been on this kick of what... I've been watching Dog the Bounty Hunter for like two days. Oh. It just popped up on my YouTube. Like it was like full episode, and I was like, "Sure," and it just kept rolling. I finally looked up the rant that he went off on the phone you, to his kid. Oh, you oh heard. my god! And did you hear his? You know, I heard. This. He literally said, "He said, okay, if anybody doesn't know, sidebar. We've been on a sidebar for fifteen minutes anyway. So sidebar, Dog the Bounty Hunter, who is." I think has been sitting and just waiting for something like this fucking Ryan, Brian Laundry shit to try to dig himself out of the hole because he 
he fucking got somebody recorded him on the phone talking to a, his son, basically telling his son that his son, he's going to fire him from his job. And because he has a black girlfriend, but he's not racist. It's because they just happen to say the N word sometimes. But did you hear his excuse? He, I love how he he said he said when I say N word, I'm not saying like the soul is bad N words, just N word. And I'm like, are you making a distinction as if they're they're both the same? There's different versions of that connotate of that of that nomenclature. I forgot what I was I was listening to something because they were talking about was it the Young Turks. I, I no, heard I saw it on the Young Turks. No, it was but it was no. This was an interview. A legitimate reporter did with Dog the Bounty Hunter. Dog the Bounty Hunter, where he said he has an N word pass. Yes, yeah, that's fucking. You know, for anybody that doesn't know, he was in prison for was it attempted murder or manslaughter? Something like that. He did like eighteen months in the seventies, or he did something. And you know, he yeah, said that they alleged. I haven't pulled up that he, docket, so I don't even know. He could be full of shit. He could have done eighteen months for drunk driving. For all he I was know. cool with the brothers, and they so they let him. He just was. His excuse was he was not aware his pass. Was no longer valid. I, that was fucking God. He is such a. I don't even know. Like that was fucking hilarious. I I literally stopped what I was doing and started laughing my ass off. I don't know it, but I still enjoy watching Dog the Bounty Hunter just because it's funny. I mean, Leland's a bad motherfucker. Yeah, Leland will fuck somebody up. Dwayne Lee's a bad motherfucker too. He's the bigger one. Yeah, isn't he? he's, he's he's a big boy. Big boy, yeah. Yeah, Leland will fuck you up though. I've seen Leland fuck people up on that show. Yeah, when he went in, when he was in the middle of like those three giant Samoan dudes and never went to the ground, I was like, God damn, boy, get some! Stick your finger in one's butt, kick the other in the nuts, and bite the other one's nipple off. That's how you survive the streets of Honolulu. But his dad's a little bit of a racist. But in his defense, he just wasn't as aware his past expired. He didn't know his knee needed needed to. Lamont uh, makes a good point. You th- he says you thought you could only in prison you could only hang out with your own race. That's not true. No, that's not there, necessarily there, true. It, it basically, it really, it comes down to when shit pops off. Well, if if, if three black dudes jump one white dude and you're white and you're right there and you don't jump in on the white dude's behalf, then you have a problem. No matter what race you are. See, here's my- but they intermingle. They fucking they 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 trade contraband and they the drug trade. They're they say I, you, they say all the time. If you know anything about like even the Aryan Brotherhood, like the biggest, baddest fucking skinhead Nazi white supremacist gang in the fucking prison system, the the only color that fucking matters is green. That's all they fucking care about. Here's my plan: when I go to prison, Jesus Christ, okay, <laughs> I'm just gonna make friends with everybody. I'm gonna be S- Switzerland. I'm going to be neutral. I was talking about that not too long ago. I was like, I got it kind of made because I'll walk in there and everybody will be like, where you from? Blah, blah, blah. I'll be like, where are my people? Where are the Asians, the old motherfuckers, and the Native Americans? That's where I go. Y'all do all your own shit. I'm going to be playing fucking rummy in the corner, eating honey buns, and fucking working out with water bags and broomsticks. All right. Can we, let's get back to Ed Gein. Back in the okay. Where, where do we leave off? George is dead. I already got it. Mom's crazy because she took it hard. Okay. Oh, that's so, right. You, did you go I was in? telling the story about the, yeah. the dog. The, the yeah, the dog. The dog. Like that, yeah. you know, because they weren't married because she's a religious fanatic. Yeah, so yeah. that was a sidebar about how crazy his mom was. Wow, that was a 20-minute rant off that sidebar. That was impressive. Dude, how do you think we get an hour and a half to two hours out of the show? We only have like 17 minutes of actual content. <laughs> but so anyway, Jumping ahead a little bit again, Augusta died on December 29th, 1945, after at least two serious strokes. She was only 67, which in 1945, I'm pretty sure that's like 166. She's like Tom Brady in football years, basically. Ooh, he almost lost in his return to New England. You see that shit? We're going off again. Hey, but other sidebar, the Cowboys beat the number one defense in the league. I will say, Tom Brady, I will say this. Him and he's Tom a Cruise. bad motherfucker. They're vampires. Tom Brady, Tom Brady's just smart. Oh, no, he does not age. Oh, he ages. You can tell. If you look at a picture of him back in the day when he first came in the league, like, you can tell he's but, his age, but he just he's just so fucking smart. What, and he stays he, in. 41? 
I don't know. Gonzo probably knows. He's 41 years old. Looks like he's in his late 20s, early 30s. Yeah. So um, I'm 48, and look at this gray. I look like I'm 85. Yeah. You look like your your beard looks like Mark Henry powdered his balls with a whole fucking container now. Let's get back of to Johnson and Johnson baby powder, and you just went, <laughs> and that is the goatee that you get. So anyway. Um, Augusta dies in 1945, and at this point, over the next s- period of time, I guess Ed decided that he was going to close off every room that his mom regularly utilized and stayed in to the point that he just pretty much fully existed in a small room next to the kitchen. <laughs> Had a little pot belly stove in there. It's all good. Anybody that doesn't know what that is, it's like a, it's a wood-burning stove, like you see in like the old westerns and because shit, that not- you can cook on top of and shit. I did hear this. You heard this. <laughs> they had no electricity. Well, yeah. I mean, people had electricity in the 40s. Not the Geens. Not the Geens, That's baby. evil. That's the devil's work. The no, devil's, da- the devil's down there just going... Can you imagine having electricity. no electricity? electricity? How, am I gonna u- how are we going to charge our vibrating butt plug that we share that we talked about last week? I know. How are we going to name's Daphne. YouTube? Daphne. She goes in that ass All right. Continue. I'm sorry. Anywho. So, um, I also wrote this down because I thought this was interesting. Uh, author Harold Schechter said in his book that uh, Ed had, quote, lost his only friend and one true love, and he was absolutely alone in the world. That is sad on so many levels. because It's sad because that's just fucking sad but it's for true. somebody to have that happen. It's true. But it's also sad because... His one and only friend in the world was a fucking psychopath, sociopath, religious fanatic, shitbox, fucking, like, she literally looked like somebody made a model of fucking, like, Charlize Theron out of Rice Krispie Treats and then took a shit on it and just, like, Hulk smashed it into the ground. That's descriptive. It's accurate. And then just, like, you just put eyes on it, like fucking Frosty the Snowman. Anyway, I don't even know where to go with that. I can't even make a joke about that yeah. shit. So now, this is where it gets weird. Now we're getting freaky. Now deep. we're getting into the fun stuff. November 16th, 1957, a hardware store owner in Plainfield named Bernice Warden disappeared. I thought Okay, go ahead. There is one before that. Okay, okay. But it doesn't he, but it doesn't okay. come up until Okay, after you're going this. In, yes. Okay, okay. I'm going in legal order if you okay. will. So, um a resident reported to the police that the hardware store's truck had left from the rear of the building at 9.30 a.m., around 9.30 a.m. And so for the whole day, the store saw only saw a couple customers, and the cops kind of chalked this up to it being the opening of deer season, which deer season, big deal pretty much everywhere but Miami, New York City, and L.A. If you have trees, it's which, a big deal. A fun side note. Ed was not a deer hunter. He did not like going deer hunting. In which yeah, because that involved leaving the house. People that talked about Ed from the town folk, he did not necessarily, necessarily have a weird, bad reputation. No, I even heard an interview with a, a local from Plainfield, Plainfield, and he just said like he was a nice guy. He was just a little off compared to everybody else. He was just but a little different. Kind of uh, th- a little, well, kind of without spoiling anything. This, what we will talk about here, you will talk about here shortly, he was the last person they would think would do this kind of stuff because of things like this. Would not go deer hunting, did not like, you know, people thought, you know, he just, maybe just couldn't shoot a gun very well, which apparently he can, but that's, you know, but they would not think he would be as fucked up as he actually turned out to be. Yeah. Okay, continue. Okay, so, um, now... It, because of deer season, like I said, there was very few customers that came through. But even then, those customers thought it was odd because the store was closed. The store, the signs had closed, all that shit. So go towards the end of the day. Bernice's son, Deputy Sheriff Frank Warden, you fucked up on this one, entered uh, the store around 5 p.m. and found the store's register open and blood stains on the floor. The owner of the store's Deputy Sheriff's son. That's who you Did take Did you out. hear... I- 
this is where this doing research on this shit gets confusing. I listened to a few podcasts on this. I heard in one podcast that he actually spoke to the son the day before. And asked about I him. didn't hear or read anything like that. One podcast I listened to, you know, knowing how these podcasts work, because hence we are doing one. Yeah. You know, we make shit up too. No, we don't make shit up, but, you know, we can get things right. Oh, yeah, I've made up literally everything up, up to this point. I heard one podcast actually say he was actually in the store the day before. He was. No, we, no, no, he was. And asking, and his son was there. Oh, see, I didn't know the son was there. And I he didn't was know asking that. about the... Oh, yeah, I guess his son would have to be there, unless his mom told him about what I will talk about. Was asking about his mother. I guess his mother was not there. And he was asking, well, when's your mom going to be here? Huh. So I didn't hear that. I knew that he knew he was there before and because I'll actually, get, that's actually coming up. He here actually in a said second. he'd be back tomorrow because he had to buy some antifreeze. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Okay, he's, yeah. he's, he because the son actually told the investigators that the night before Ed was there in the store and was supposed to come back the next day for a right. gallon of antifreeze. So he obviously did. I now whether or not the, <laughs> which apparently back then you had they had to serve you antifreeze, which I find it weird. You couldn't just buy a jug like they were like it was, I don't know if it was like a fuel pump or what, mm, but like maybe. they pumped it to order. Like propane. Kind of like propane, yeah. I saw so propane and propane accessories. Just got it wrong. Maybe it wasn't the sun, but, you know, he was there the day before, and I heard he asked about the the mother. Yeah. I, see, I didn't see that part. Premeditation. So, on top of that, throw on top of that, the last receipt written in that store was for a gallon of antif- antifreeze written by Bernice Warden the morning she disappeared. So she had opened the store, sold a gallon of antifreeze, gotten abducted at this point is all we know, uh, and then somebody flipped the sign and left. See, I heard he actually killed her there. Oh, I'm just talking about what... Oh, just, God, Phil, you're oh, okay. ruining everything. You said abducted, so I thought you were... God, uh... Get to, well, I'm just... I'm going because Ed Gein, for a smart so, fellow, was not a very smart Well, criminal. so because of this... Ed was arrested uh, that evening by uh, at a West Plainfield grocery store and by the uh, Washara County Sheriff's Department, and they then searched his, the farm. Um, we'll get into the whole list of what was found there, but just for just a little cock tease for everybody. Uh, a sheriff's deputy found uh, Bernice Warden's decapitated body in a shed on the property. She was ha- hung upside down by her legs with a crossbar at her ankles and ropes tied to her wrists, tying her to the ground. Well, in Ed's defense, it was deer season. He just, you know, he just didn't hunt deer. Yes. He field dressed her. Yes. He was, she literally, they, the cops said she was dressed like a deer. She was decapitated and she was split from crotch to chest and disemboweled. Like it, like um, much like you would a deer, right? Traditionally, right. Flip it, maybe depending on your technique. Who taught you? So, uh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> what? What are you, Jesus? Nothing. Why are you bring Jesus? Just a random this? little shit I have written off oh. on the side. Um. So, uh, they also found that um. She was killed with a twenty two caliber rifle and was she the mutilation happened after her death. Are you gonna get into that twenty two caliber rifle? Uh about how apparently she was showing it to Ed and it just went off and magically went through her head. Now, one of the podcasts I listened to, I only listen listened to one podcast that actually explained this. They said and this is them, I they said he had a bullet on him. She was showing it to him, he took it, loaded it, shot her, put it back up. Left the cartridge in the gun. In the gun. See, I read that he claimed that he was looking at the gun and it went off because they have loaded guns on display in Back stores. In the, yeah, the 40s and 50s, yes. Sir. I doubt that. I wouldn't surprise Loaded, me. ready to go. Wouldn't surprise me. I mean, you got to remember. I'm going to guess maybe. I'm, I'm a kid of the 80s and 90s. We still had gun racks in the trucks. Okay, now we're going to jump to the other one that you were. The, the first one that you. Yes. Yeah, get to this one. Because this. After, obviously after he gets arrested for this shit show, other things start to come to light. So let me preempt this with talking about how, as we said earlier, people he was known as Saggy Baggy Eyes by the community because once his mom died and his brother was dead and it was just him, he start, then he started going out into the world 
and he would go to the bar and shit and they really called him saggy baggy eyes a lot because people would spike his beer with mm. brandy and whiskey and get him fucked up and his eye would droop even worse and they'd start making so fun what you do him. to me at the bar no what <laughs> sydney does to both of us at the bar that is true um so <clears throat> here we go during the interrogation over the bernice warden killing ed also admitted to the shooting death of mary hogan who was a tavern owner that was went missing in 1954 but later he denied the memory of the details of that death little sidebar that i found funny is he was around and people all were like oh old ed's a smitten for mary and when she dis when she first disappeared they'd be like you know ed if you would have just made your move, you might have got her. And he was like, what are you talking about? Mary's at the house. She's making yeah, right. dinner, getting dinner ready for me. And he's just making little jokes and people just laugh it off. She was. She was at the house. She was at the house. But <laughs> you, did, you're gonna get, are you going to get to this, who she resembled? His mom. Exactly. Most, pretty much every person that he ever did something to, he specifically sought out women that reminded him of his mother. Right. But so apparently this woman looked like at Augie. Like a, a bag of fucking Rottweiler dicks that got some acid and salt thrown on it, beaten to death, and somebody poured some lime juice on it and then plated it. Because that's what his mom looked like. If you say so. I mean, that was a lot to take in and digest. But that plate probably tastes better than her just moldy fucking... Like, I bet you her I, I bet you her vagina looked like if you took a camel foot I told and you put, vagina. if you put a camel in the bath and its foot got all pruny like our fingertips do and I need shit to go do, get the camel that's toe, what the camel, camel that's, what, towing. that's what her vagina would look Is like. That that, need- I'm still fucking mad at Cole for getting that hat for that party. I wanted that hat, that piece of shit. So let's jump ahead to the good stuff. Okay. The list of evidence found at Ed Gein's farmhouse. Let's go. I, it. It's over a page. Oh, I know. All right. So, at Ed Gein's farmhouse while searching, authorities found whole human bones and fragments, a waste basket made of human skin, human skin used as upholstering to cover the seats of several chairs, uh, human uh, skulls on his bedposts, which that's just fucking metal as shit. Like, that's you know how awesome. much? Yeah. Like, okay, not real ones, but I'd fucking love to have a, a bed with skulls on it. You actually have to, like, you have to uh, go through a process to own a human. You can own a human skull, but you have to go through a process and get, like, a a, a certificate. Well, when I die, I'm going to. When I die, fuck it, I want to go to hell. I'm going to will my skull to you. Because I'm a piece of fucking shit. It ain't hard to fucking tell. Yeah, okay, go ahead. R.I.P. Biggie. But that's not the only thing he used skulls for. Get to that. Oh, yeah. Female skulls, some some with the tops sawn off. Bowls made from human skulls. Eating his Cheerios sick. out of... Um, a corset f- made from female torso skinned from the shoulders to the waist. Leggings made from human leg skin. Blow me, Lululemon. You lose that battle. Every time. Um, masks made from the skin of female heads. Mary Hogan's face, quote-unquote, mask in a paper bag. Mary Hogan's skull in a box... Bernice Warden's whole fucking head in a burlap sack. Bernice Warden's heart, quote unquote, in a plastic bra- bag in front of his his pot belly stove, which would lead you to believe he was going to eat it. That's one thing. Cannibalism has yeah, been. It, it about. was always denied. But you know they can't. And prove, I still. Who knows? You can't prove yes or no. Who who knows? Uh, nine volve in a shoe bo- shoe box. Okay, vaginas for you. Other people. Yeah, basically the outer, the outside of a vagina, which I... What the fuck are you going to do with that? I don't know. Maybe, like, you're worried about burning your face and, like, you need, uh, like, a skin graft to give yourself new lips. I mean, what, are you going to put it on a fucking pumpkin and cut a hole and just glue it on a pumpkin and... Oh, dude, this guy could have been, like, they. he could have been, he could have owned the first pocket pussy. Very possible. He actually got the ball rolling. Yeah. Pun intended. A little too real, realistic. Yeah. Lifelike. But in the, apparently, some of this stuff, if at least the Volve, if not a lot of the other stuff, was also spray-painted silver so that it wouldn't decompose. Hey, he was smart. No, he had a robot fetish. <laughs> he was ahead of his time in that one, too. 
He was, was old Ed was jacking off in the 21st century. He was over here banging robot twat, ro twat. Hashtag bot twat. Hashtag uh, new shirt. <laughs> um, they also found a young girl's dress and the quote unquote vulvas of two females assumed to have been about 15 years old, which that's fucked. I mean, it's all fucked. Um, a belt made from female human nipples. I saw the picture. He repurposed. I saw all these, the pictures of most of this stuff. I did not even look for the pictures. I did not want to see. Dude, the picture of Bernice Warden's body still hanging. Oh, that, oh, no shit. Yeah, you can, yeah, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Um, Four noses, a pair of lips on a window shade drawstring. A partridge in a pear tree? What the fuck else? Well, that was my thing. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, God damn it. They didn't have electricity. Imagine what he'd hang up for the little uh, clickers for his ceiling fan. Well, that's what. Did you get to what he made? Oh, the list isn't even done. Okay, get to um, A lampshade made from human okay. skin of a face. Stop right there. Lampshade. The motherfucker had no electricity. What did he do? Or did they? Why did he need a lampshade if he didn't have electricity? Why not? When, I saw the lamp. The lamp, had the, the, one, the lamp had a cord. The one group we always talk about this podcast. When you get into that. They may have. You never know. I didn't really specifically read anything about electricity or not, but the, I saw the lamp. The lamp did have a cord. Or maybe he killed another, or they thought he killed another one, but she was alive the whole time, and she ended up dying of, like, freezing, of hypothermia, because they never found her, and she was just off in the woods running a giant fucking hamster wheel running his house. Hey. God damn it, Bertha! He's, I'm not sewing, I'm not done sewing Jane together! I don't know what we're complaining about, he was keeping his carbon footprint low. Suck it, Lady Gaga. He's killing the game. He's chic as fuck. Uh, what else? And uh, last but not least, fingernails from women's fingers. Okay, that's just fucking weird. Yeah, that is weird. You lose me at the fingernails. That's what I was wondering. I was like, is it clippings or is he just like, was he mob, like mafia torturing them? Okay. When are we going to get to get to the, the inspiration for the lampshade? You hear that? You heard that, right? I don't when, have that. When are you going to get to the people who we always talk about on this podcast? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Like you're talking about the Nazis. Yeah, he yeah. Because because after his mom died, like people even people knew him to read a lot. Right. As we said, he excelled in reading as a kid, and he specifically liked um, like adventure stuff mm-hmm. and a lot of stuff that had to do with Nazis and uh, darker fiction. Right. And he read about this female Nazi. Doctor or whatever, or whatever the fuck in one of the concentration who camps. Made a fucking lampshade out of a human face. Right. So what he does he do? Monkey see, monkey do. And he did it. I mean, the fucking Nazis. Between Augie and the Nazis, this man never had a fighting chance. Right? Like But Sidebar, he was just ahead of his time. If you recreate all this shit with not real human skin, because that's not really cool, and put it in fucking Target, white women will buy the fuck out of this. They'll be like, oh my God, it's spoopy season. White women will buy the I'm going to put this lampshade face together while I drink my pumpkin spice latte and just ignore my husband for yelling at me for buying more pumpkin stuff. Honey, have you seen my... All of my orange, brown, black, and gray clothing, particularly my cowl neck shawls, because I'd refuse to wear a jacket, and if I do, it will only be a North Face. I love white women. Where are all the white women at? Where are the white women at? Uh, no. Um, in, in, in the process of all this, Ed had uh, admitted to visiting three local... Uh, cemeteries to rob graves in a quote unquote days like state um between 1947 and 1952 he alleged to have made over 40 or just over 40 trips to these grave sites and he said that around 30 of those times he actually snapped out of his days and left empty handed and also made it a point to say that he left the graves in uh, good order. Well, let, 
he was ahead of his time. This man was a genius. Well, and mind you, they did they did go to these places and go to these recently because he only did he only robbed recently dug graves. Right, he would look at the because it's easier. Because it's easier, right? But so people who are listening who are watching know all of the stuff you listed did not come from or not all of not all of it came from the you know the two women he killed. No, like this a lot of the skulls and stuff. Came well, from and that grave. was that was the other thing is the body counts a little off. Yeah, but. He's definitely he's he's almost one hundred percent to blame for at least from my count one or two more missing persons. Well, see, the, it's because of the skulls. But the count of the skulls. There's twelve skulls in his house. But they found the skulls of most of the bodies that he had desecrated after death, and it left one or two skulls unaccounted for i heard one but one for sure that's what i'm saying I, I, there's speculation on another one from a missing girl in another part of wisconsin like a couple months before this so, so in actuality we only have confirmed two deaths possibly a third with his brother the you know and grave rob, grave robbing now whether he lied about there was one more murder or more graves who the fuck knows but in in 1950, whatever, what was it, 57? What, when he... When he, when he got caught. He went to trial in 57. So 56, whatever, whenever he got caught. Anybody that came up missing automatically in Wisconsin was going to get... Well, at, it's at least the, the thought's going to at least but cross people's minds. Let's face it, it's fucking Wisconsin. People are probably just leaving... And, and it's not like Green Bay... I'm getting Bay, the fuck out of here, this place sucks Yeah, balls. and it's not like Green Bay or Madison. It's not like... Like Lacrosse, I don't know where Plainfield is exactly, but like I said, I've been I've been to Lacrosse, Wisconsin. It's not horribly far away from major areas. But I've been through Wisconsin. Yeah, been through. Like I want to say, I want to say Lacrosse. I wanted to get the fuck out. I'm trying to think of where I actually stayed. If I stay, if I was in Lacrosse, like it's not horribly far from like Madison. But my point, like maybe two hours. We know we have two confirmed kills. Two confirmed. Allegedly, well, but and, yes. And if I'm being honest with you, I'm not all that impressed with that game in serial killer terms. He is the minor league of, he's rookie ball serial killer. Yeah. He's mayor of batshit crazy town. Well, and it, and, and it, there's a lot there's a lot to this shit because there's, there's the argument of, there's the mom thing. There's the argument of whether whether or whether or not he did cannibalize some of these women in one way, shape, or form, because nobody knows. There's the argument of his uh, his not understanding or questioning of his own sexuality. But my point is, by definition, Ed Gein technically isn't a serial. Killer. Is not a serial killer. You have to no. have three. Yeah. I could draw a half mile radius. From our location, the GTIN studios right here, half mile race, draw a circle around. I probably can get two people with a higher body count than fucking Ed Gein. Oh, probably. I guarantee it. Yeah, probably. But he's fucked up. Yeah. That shit crazy. You haven't even well, got I mean, to the craziest well, fucking that, that's thing. That's one of those things. Is like, is like there, there's, there's a certain line that you get to where somebody who killed 10 people is not as creepy as somebody who has the ability to do something like this. Somebody who like can just shoot somebody and walk away. Yeah, they're fucking off somehow. Right. But it's a totally different like I could probably you could probably sit there and have a beer with a lot of people like that and not think twice about it. You're gonna get Whereas to... this fucking guy has a belt made out of nipples and I saw that belt too. I saw the belt, I saw the lampshade, I saw his gloves. So basically he would have been styling the yeah, gallows. I, I saw his gloves that were made out of human hands. Oh, get get to the haunting. The Oh, the the alleged haunting. The alleged, I don't his, even have that in here, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Get to his house or his farm was allegedly haunted. I will explain that because my next my next point leads me into that. Um, so this all started with, according to what he said, told to the police, shortly after his mom died, he had then started to make his quote, as he called it, woman suit, so that he could again quote. Become his mother to literally crawl into her skin. Do we see the uh, similarities between... So many things. Norman Bates. Red Dragon. Red Dragon. Bobby Boucher, even. Uh, what's his name? Who? 
Texas Chainsaw. But this is why he inspired some of these, the infamous yeah. character horror. Characters. Buffalo Bill. Buffalo Bill literally did this right in Silence of the Lambs. But get you. Get, so get to so me. what Phil's talking about is uh, there was a legend, if you will, around Plainfield that there was the spirit of a woman who would sing and dance on Ed's property at right. night. And it turns out that it was, in fact, Ed in his woman's skin suit with a dress, and he would just dance and scream at the top of his lungs in his front yard and also beat on a drum that he had made also out of human skin. Huh. Yeah. I, I mean, I went a little deeper than you did, didn't I? You did. I did not hear the drum. So, thing. first time I've ever been deeper than somebody else. Uh, yeah. That's I'm, a pretty cool one. That is fucking awesome. If you don't man. drink both those in the next five minutes, I'm drinking one of them. I got I to gotta pee. We're going to have to wrap this up. I'm only an hour in. Well, I'll drink the other one then. Fuck it. You drink the other one. Uh, I'm going to have to. You're going to have to finish this up. I'm oh, no. I've, I'm, I'm, We're about I'm right here. Uh, I've only got about a page left. We got to get to the paranormal. Because really, people. all the crazy shit is what he did with the bodies. Right. The murders aren't that nuts. No, he shot one. In- His childhood is fucking nuts, and what he did with these bodies is nuts. Let's be honest. And there's one. He was an avid reader, right? Think about what yeah. he, people at home listening and watching. Think about what we just told you. He was ro- grave robbing, killing people, grave robbing, building a person suit. Oh, and- sorry. And he was a well-read individual. Finish this point because I have. You know, a throw you know in. what? I think he read Mary Shelley's Mary Shelley's Frankenstein a little too mm. intently because he was the modern day, or well, he was reading Mary Shelley's Frankenstein while he Brahms stroked his Dracula. Do you think he was impotent? About he got he, Well, he he claimed. Speaking of, he denied. Any claims of him having sex with well, these dead bodies because he, he that he exhumed because he said they smelled too bad. But and here's how fucked he's never he never according to he never had sex in his life, and you tell him why. You know why, right? Because it was bad. No, because his mother made him and his brother promise to never have sex with a woman. I didn't see that. Oh yeah, I just assumed it was a thing. No. Like I didn't assume that the promise was made. I just assumed that like he had been taught, he had no. been, been indoctrinated with. That's no. just. I evil. agree with Augie. Women are the devil, Bobby Boucher. Women Bougie. are the devil. I agree I, with it. I forbid you to see that woman. Except she for is any the devil. women in the chat room. He said, "I like Vicky Valencourt, and she likes me back, and she showed me her boobies, and I like them too." <laughs> I mean, I think women are the devil too, except for the ones in the chat. Or listening right now. Or you know watching. how I am, though. I've, I've become much more... But... Well, not since you've known me, but in the last, like, four or five years of my life, I've become much more calm and less hateful. But... Even I'm everybody saying, that thinks I hate them, I don't actually hate them. What does that say? So a pure murderer? All right. I, I would say... Like I said, in my opinion, Ed Gein is amateur murderer. Grrr, whack job. Like I said... He is El Presidente of Fuckville. Yeah. Oh, another little story. Oh, well, before I forget, I saw it before. Keep the shirt. Gosh, Everybody he that's in here, when this is done, or right now if you want to, go on Spotify and go on YouTube and look up Justin Back. There is no reason why this man has less subscribers than us on YouTube. We just talk shit. He has actual talent. He has less than us? Dude, I was his second subscriber. No shit? Yeah. Yeah. Well, go subscribe to his shit. He's a fantastic... He, he, I will say, like, you're not going to find a shitload of content on his Spotify yet. He's got two singles on there. One's called Blue Collar. I will say, and I'll say this to his face... I'm a bigger fan of it live than I am his recording. Hey. He changed too much to make it sellable, I guess. It's better live, but it's a well-written song, and it, it, I, 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 the, the man, is he's a talented human being. You can go with us next time we go see him. Uh, he's in the studio right now. I saw that post. Or I saw a post the other day from somebody who's always posted stuff. He's recording something. 
Oh, I don't. Yeah. But I got, hey, we have more subscribers. We will pump his shit out. Oh, fuck yeah. But we want a song. We want to get, I, I was going to say, we, I've thought about having him like do like a guitar no, no, riff no, or something. No, no. We want to shout out in a song. That doesn't really work very well. I don't give a fuck. I disappear like ghosts in the night. There, there you go. I got to piss. Continue. I got to All right. So I'll talk about something I'm sure you heard about. I'm going to talk about the I'm going to talk about the shrunken heads, which I'm sure you know about. Yeah. Okay. So another sidebar that I found really interesting about this whole thing is uh so um again, he denied having sex with any of these bodies that he exhumed or women that he killed cuz they said they smelled too bad. Personally, I question if that was a problem with the dead body or if that was just the fact that it was the fucking 40s. And they had stanky twatatitis. Personal opinion. Probably not the best hygiene. I can speak to that personally. Where you talk? I already listed the nipple belt, Tyler. Where you at, bruh? Bruh? So, um, I found this one interesting, though, just because it, it, it's just so, it ends so perfectly. So, a 16-year-old whose parents were friends with Ed, um... Like he, I guess this kid went to like baseball games with him and shit. Because again, Ed got along with kids better than he got along with adults. Not surprising. He had no fucking childhood because his just it literally like his mom. His mom was like, if you took a flesh colored roll of fucking bubble tape from when you were a kid, the kind you buy at Walgreens, and you chewed it up and then swallowed it, and then you shit it out seven years later at like a high school prom while you were just drunk on like on like fucking. Sour apple pucker and fucking like stolen MGD from your stepdad's beer fridge, and then you shit that out, and then you just poked out little holes to make it look like eyes. That's what Ed Gein's mom looked like. So anyway, so this sixteen-year-old kid that hung out with Ed from time to time reported to his par- to his parents and people that Ed kept shrunken heads in his house that were sent to him from the Philippines by a cousin during World War Two, but they were just actual fucking human faces that he peeled off of humans and wore as a mask. Tyler's really stuck on that nipple belt. I see that. I want one. It's very edgy. It's like... It's like... Hmm, let me think. It's like the incel version of the uh, ammo belts that all the metal bands used to wear in the 80s. Oh, yeah. True story, my uncle... Last time I saw him, still wore one of those when he would play drums live with his band. And I was like, Uncle Wally, you're 46. And you're not Gene Simmons. Also, fuck Gene Simmons. What? Also, fuck Kiss. They're overrated. I'm not saying they're bad. They're overrated. Uh, We've had this conversation before. They're the Nickelback of the 70s. No, 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 no. Don't, don't insult them that way. Okay, I'll take well, that back. Take, Ace Nickel, Freely. Here, here, here's the thing. Nickelback, assholes, had great songs. No, they didn't. Yes. That's, Every song is the same. Eh, that's rock Except and roll. For, I look at the photograph. Every time I do a thing in my ass. Kiss were innovative, shitty fucking music. Oh, yeah. But they were... You would not have... But, Peter you Chris was a good drummer. Slipknot now, who you suck the dick of Slipknot all the time, which I don't get. I'm not a big Slipknot fan. But you would not have Slipknot. You have to listen. You would not have Slipknot See, if that's you did the not thing. have Kiss. You dick ride Kiss. No, you I don't, don't understand. Dis- my, shitty music. You don't understand my love of Slipknot because you like Kiss, and then Slipknot screams and shit, but also no, see, has worthwhile lyrics. But you Whereas can't, you can't understand them. God, Kiss I, just I'm talks old. about... I can. But you're also talking about the to the guy that like listens to the, Signs of the Swarm and Shadow of the Ten. I can understand and, that shit. I need a translator. And I'm like, yeah, no. This this whole album's about global warming. Okay, fuck them twice. No, Oceano really does have a song about uh, global preservation. But or a whole album. Were inter- it was about the brand. And fuck you if you don't you don't support our podcast, brethren, because who uh, who, who, do I, who do I not support? The, Homeboy from Spread the Dread Podcast. They mean? posted something, and I was like, you could just see like the very top of the font on the shirt. And even just from that, I commented on it. I was like, sir, is that an Oceano t-shirt? And he was like, correct. And I was like, did we just get become best friends? 
that's almost a niche within the deathcore world is just Oceano fans. Buffalo Bill. It is Buffalo Bill, isn't it? I think so. Bill, Bob, it's all all the same. Don't interrupt me on my Kiss. Sideshow Mel, Sideshow Bob. Kiss's music sucked. Outside of Ace Freely. Ace Freely was a damn good machine. Peter Chris was a really good drummer, too. They in just the didn't let him. They just, well, in he, the beginning, in, toward well, the end, you know. Well, it I'll, wasn't Peter Chris. Well, towards no. Towards the end. end of his Peter Chris died. Peter Chris is. That's Eric Carr died. Oh, okay. Well, then Peter fuck Peter. Chris, Peter either, Chris, but well, both of them. Peter Chris is still alive. He was the original drummer. Yes, he's the one that looks weird as fuck now. Right, yeah. Like he looks like he like he instead of Botox, he got shot up with like that fucking expanding foam that yeah. they put in your walls. But the music is fucking horrible. But it was the show. It was the extravaganza. And they laid the way See, but that's my thing. If you're from that generation, fuck them, just listen to Alice Cooper. I see Because Alice Cooper's I, the same way, but Alice Cooper songs are actually good. No, I don't see I, I do not like Alice Cooper songs. Alice, well, I'd rather listen to the Okay, Kiss but look Alice who you're Cooper. talking to. Like, Because to me, I fucking, you know I love Rob Zombie. Which Alice is Cooper's all- just the Rob Zombie of the 70s. Well, really, Ro- uh, Rob Zombie is the Alice Cooper of the 90s. Uh, Rob Zombie is better than Alice Cooper. Obviously. No disrespect to Alice Cooper. My mom would no. kick me in the dick if I was here. Oh, I mean, that. but it, that was all about the show. <laughs> That was about Brandy. Kiss is it about puts the Brandy. lotion on its skin or it gets the hose again. It wasn't about the music. Where's my auto trader? I mean, literally, Kiss's music Suck is dick. like a three-year-old wrote the fucking shit. Literally. Ah, uh, what a rock and roll all night and party every day. Great. Now, now we just we owe fucking Gene Simmons a million dollars now. Thank you. No, I changed it enough. That could be a parody. Uh, Black Sabbath. Want cock and balls now all we're night. talking Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath is sick, sick as fuck. Tony Iommi, Ooh. Geezer Butler. Oh my god! Like I'm not even talking about Ozzy. Tony Iommi, like rewrote the history of guitar with some of the tones that he hit because he started no- drop tuning his top string, string and shit, and he didn't even have all his fucking fingers. He had prosthetics on his fingertips. There weren't even prosthetics. There were wood. That's right. Yeah. yeah. He had wooden fingertips on two of his fingers. They and he's still General's gathered in their masses. God, see, dude, we need to just have every, like, once every two or three months, we just need to have an Patreon. episode where we just talk about music. Patreon. Because you know me. You're, I, I like I can sit and have a music conversation with you, but I think we can both sit here and agree that, out of the two of us, I am definitely the one that can just go off on never-ending rants about right. music in one way, shape, or form. When it comes to music, you have like a photographic memory. It's just media in general, movies, music, all that. And we have like, but I'm not a snob. Like you're, I'm not into your deathcore shit, but I respect the the talent, the talent it. of yeah. it. Which is like, I don't like a lot of shit. I respect every, even Nickelback. I fucking hate Nickelback. Like, I fucking hate Nickelback. Just because. Not even just their music. Like, I hate, I, it's, I hate Chad Kroger. Right. Kroger, whatever the fuck. He's a, he's a walking, talking cock. Right. I can't stand that fucking dude. But I don't take anything, I will say, I don't take anything away from their hustle and their grind and their work to get what, what they have achieved. Nobody becomes a a, a, a high selling mass millionaire musician without putting in the time and the effort. Right. I'll never take that away from anybody. Did you know that? Did here's what really fucking pisses me off about Nickelback. They have officially gotten to the point. They have outsold Rush, as far as Canadian bands. Explain that fucking shit to me. I don't even know how they've outsold fucking Mariah or not Mariah Carey, Celine Dion. Well, nobody's outsold fucking. They're the most popular band to ever come out of Canada. Sales wise. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. The standing huh. in line I'll never get in I type these stupid fucking dumbass songs. Dumbass songs. You just don't like I like to drag my balls on the sidewalk cause I got 
fucking crabs from my cousin Dolores. Just because him and Corey Taylor had a little fucking beef. For 20 years, I'm fucking 32 years old. What? He said, good for a 20 year old, huh? I am 32. Almost 32. Eat my dick. You're just mad because I look better than you. How? Oh, oh, I. I and he, don't get a fucking offended by that. I, I, dude, I worry about that shit all the time when I say shit to people that watch the live stream. I'm like, if you're in here and you're going to get butt hurt about something that we say back to you, you're in the wrong fucking mm. podcast. And if you if you say something, we love you. <laughs> and that's how we express our love. I tell him to fuck off daily. I'm mean as fuck to my friends. That's how you know. I say all the time. Everybody like you, People will be like, you're fucking mean. I'm like, dude, if I'm nice to you all the time... It's because I want you to get the fuck away because I don't fuck with you. If I'm nice to somebody. To an extent. I mean, it obviously depends on the, the, the person. He's from Alabama. Roll Tide, bitches. Roll Tide. Well, what is that supposed to mean? Is it... They don't get. Alabama people don't get butt hurt. That's what he's trying to say. Oh, so your cousin's making dinner for you and the kids, huh? Oh, don't fuck with ha! that. Ha! That's low. Ha! That's low. <laughs> Uh, no. Stick it down, down, but if down, I, down. If I'm down, nice down, to somebody, down. if I'm nice to somebody, if I'm like unnecessarily nice to you, it's just because I, I want to get the fuck away from I you. I do not like you. Yeah, it's because I, I just want to be away from you. If I'm indifferent, I probably actually like you. I'm, I'm, ta- we're go, we're cool. But if I'm overly nice, oh yeah, to you, you've seen how I am. Like walk into the bar and you're my bud. You're all I do. Until you sit down, like, hey, how you doing, man? Oh, oh, he just inadvertently roasted you. <laughs> okay, let me finish this up real quick, and then we can go off on our tangent. Um, okay, again, like I said, se- suspected of several other uh, unsolved cases. That goes without saying. Yeah, but it's it's Wisconsin. I, just in general, and crazy. I mean, it's just it's just like the Velisca house. Like, look but, what the look at how that went. There was fucking literally like thirteen fucking suspects by the time it was all said and done. But in all serious, Wisconsin, there's some weird shit going on in Wisconsin. It's the paranormal capital of the United States. Let's be honest. I think it's the cheese curds. Oh yeah, my ex had some very interesting right. stories about a house that she moved into that I don't poo poo at all. Still to this day, she's my ex, but like. I think there's more. If the story she told me and the background of it, I was like, God damn, yeah, you is a good thing you guys moved. I mean, we got the, Bre- the Beast of Bray Road, werewolves, cryptids. We have, it's one of the most active UFO sites in the country. Brett Favre's career. Aaron Rodgers' hair. Brett Favre's career only lives on in Green Bay. That's true. But, you know, ghosts, spirits, demons, it runs the gambit of fucking paranormal so yeah so little shit i literally can wrap this up in like a minute so 1957 during the trial ed was diagnosed with schizophrenia and thus found mentally incompetent and unfit for trial um after that he was sent to central state hospital for his criminally insane and later transferred to the mendota state hospital in madison wisconsin where for the most part he lived out his days he ended up he died uh, of respiratory failure, secondary to lung cancer, on July 26, 1984. And the only other little sidebar that I threw in there is uh, Ed's 1949 Ford sedan was sold to a, at public auction for $760 to a carnival sideshow operator named Bunny Gibbons, who charged people 25 cents to see it. And now it's in Zach's back in the museum. Is it? I'm, no, <laughs> that's a joke. I'm surprised. Dude, they also not. sold the farm for like $4,600. It was like a, almost 200 acres by the time they sold it. Damn. Yeah, yeah, and the the house burnt down. Lar- arson is suspected. No shit. Dude, there's a lot of cops in the history of this world that are Jerry Driver level. Brings me back to the fucking oh, the fuck. Cecil Hotel guy. Well, we suspect that he either jumped, fell, or was pushed. Derp. We hit Derp-a-derp-a-derp. all. Derp-a-derp-a-derp. Wait, covered all the bases. So, yeah, literally. It's like I said, unless he fucking, unless he pop-locked out the fucking window. Breaking two electric boogaloo? He cranked that Superman way too hard. Did he do the worm out the window? Maybe. I don't know, but yeah, that's pretty much all I got on Ed Gein. Like I said, the, uh-uh. the, the, the aftermath was not that crazy. The The murders themselves were not that crazy. It was the fucking crazy shit that he did. 
in the midst of all of that. Like I said, he was mayor of fucking Crazyville. But on serial kill, serial kill, killer level. Well, like level, you said, they diagnosed him with schizophrenia. So like it, it doesn't. It's not nearly as shocking once you read that. Right. It's but still fucking shocking, but he, like that's some schizophrenic shit. Not 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 saying that uh, coming that schizophrenia comes with stuff like this, but it sheds a more of a light and more of an understanding on why in his mind he could justify the activities that he was doing. You would have have to have some type of a dissociative disorder or schizophrenia. It, 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 you oh, he have was to fucking batshit crazy. You have to. No normal human well, being he was does actually this. Actually, clinically, schizophrenic, yeah, he, he was right. actually diagnosed with schizophrenia right. while he was going through the court system. Right. But in 1957, <laughs> no, I mean, I'm sure he's probably. That, if anything, that's probably he was just more, he, probably there, more schizophrenic. Exactly. I'm just saying he was probably worse off than what we think. But <laughs> in terms of serial killer, he is no Jeffrey Dahmer. No, he is no Richard Ramirez. He well, no I mean, really, Jeffrey guy. Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer really was just a a higher volume, watered down version of this. Well, what, like I said, I want serial killer. I want body count. Well, baby. like you said, I Ed, want Hillary Ed Gein, Clinton body Ed Gein, count. Ed Gein, by the the definition of it, is not a serial. No, killer. By definition, he probably he is, is a murderer. I would say he is. You need three to be considered a serial killer. He's. he's I would call his brother. He killed his fucking brother. So by definition, technically, he is, in my opinion. I would say even if he wasn't intending on killing his brother, I think he had something to do with his brother's eventual death. Yes. I don't know if he wanted his brother to die. Oh, yeah. But I think he knocked his brother the fuck out. He was talking smack against his mama. Mama Dares. Mom's a stupid, crazy bitch, Ed. No. He just, he did, he went Wyatt Earp. No. (laughs) No. Here we go. Tombstone has made it on again. If we we can't go through a whole show without fucking reference. We gotta just do a movie, like <laughs> because we've been thinking about doing Patreon episodes. We can do that. Like like once every once in a while, we'll just ask. Like we'll fucking just have somebody on Patreon suggest a movie, and we'll fucking critique it. Like horror movies for Patreon. Ooh, oh, it's Spoopy season two. I'm doing that tonight. I don't work tomorrow. I'm watching at least two horror movies tonight. I still haven't watched Hereditary. It's supposed to be one of. It's supposed to be the best horror movie, and it, it was made in 2019, I think. But it's supposed to be the best horror movie that's been made in the last like 15 or 20 years. Of Mice and Men is not a horror movie, Tyler. I'm sorry, George. <laughs> I didn't mean to hurt him, George. But that's what we ought to do because we've been talking about doing something for Patreon, a separate episode just for the Patreon viewers or listeners or yeah, watchers. something themed. I think analyzing and going over horror movies would be a good. But we spell it with a W. Horror movies. We could with do Travi it. and Phil. What does that say? Hereditary? Hereditary is weird. Yeah, that's what that's what makes a good scary movie. Right. I don't want that tra- I, I hate that like like everybody's like Well it's just like one of the girls that I might, if she wants to, have make some TikToks for us and shit. She was like, Have you seen The Conjuring 2? I was like, Yeah, it's fucking stupid. But that's what movies like that are not fucking scary. They're scary to people because they don't understand the world from whence it, from whence it came. And they're also scary because they don't understand the fucking Bullshit people that fucking were a part of it because I stand by it. All due respect to the dead, I wish they hadn't died if they pain- died painfully or too soon. But I'm not a fan of some of the fucking. I'm very open about this. I'm not a fan of some of the fucking techniques that the Warrens used to become as famous as they did in the paranormal world. I think that they kind of rode the coattails of Christian and Catholic fear, and they used that to their advantage. And I dare anybody to fucking argue that fact with me. But I think, oh, I've seen ABCs of Death 1 and 2. I think we should do that. Have we'll, seen Faces of Death? We'll pick a movie, we'll watch it, and then critique it and give our opinions on it for Patreon. I mean, if so. you pick any Nightmare on Elm Street, I don't even need to watch it. I haven't seen those in fucking years. Freddy Krueger's always been my favorite. He's the most terrifying slasher, if you think about it. Uh, but I think that would be a good episode. I may have seen that. I think that would be a fucking good episode. Just talk shit about... Oh, I'd have fun with that. 
That's like you know, I'm a straight up cinephile. I mean, it's like in I like going back watching old shit because I remember I, we might have. Oh yeah, because still some to this day, some of the best fucking horror movies are like the old black and white uh, Dracula and Nosferatu. Wolfman and shit. Nosferatu is fucking terrifying. Oh fuck yeah, it is. But for a movie that has no sound, Nosferatu is fucking scary. It's um, not scary. Nosferatu is fucking creepy. It. it as opposed to using CGI and musical effects and shit like that to scare you, Nosferatu feeds on that 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 primal fear of the unknown thing that lurks in the dark. And knowing anything about that movie and knowing about the guy that played Nosferatu makes it even scarier. Right. He literally lived that life he while he was in that character. Method. They only filmed at night because he would not come out during the day because in his mind he was he was the creature of the night for the whole filming of that movie. But, There's a movie about that. Yeah, I think I've I've not seen it, but I think I, it's got John Malkovich in it. That's like oh, it, it does actually. I've seen, but uh, the I'm a uh, cinephile, just so you know. But like I remember as a kid, Salem's Lot. You know the Stephen King movie or Stephen King novel? Yeah, King movie, Stephen or with Salem's Lot with uh, Hus Hus was it was it Hutch or Starsky Husqvarna? No, Starsky and Hutch. Size Husky? No, one of the guys who played, I think it was Hutch. He was, that scared the fuck out of me as a kid. And oh, then I watched I it in my what, 20s. I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh, it was just like the fucking Exorcist. Like, the Exorcist is oh, not fuck. scary. Oh, fuck. But I remember watching that. There's that there's a one scene where Juliet Lewis's dad, you know who Juliet Lewis is? Yeah. He was in all the... Yeah, I've seen it. Clint Eastwood movies. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. But when he's at the window, uh-huh. that gave me nightmares yeah. for fuck. I could not yeah. sleep for fucking months. Yeah, that was fucking. Yeah, you know I'll give said, you that one. If nothing else, just that scene from oh, that movie. That yeah. was fucking horrible. Oh, I mean, or, but uh, the, what was the other one? The Storm? That was another Stephen King one. It was like, it was like Cape Cod or something like that. And like. Uh, this gnarly storm that like shut down the town and like everybody was in this church and shit came through and I can't remember the actor's name, but uh, he was, it ends up, he's the devil and the devil's coming for the town. And like, there's just like, there's just something about it's so calm and so collected other than the fact that there's a crazy tropical storm going on outside. And this dude, the whole time is just, just, like even as an actor, like they'll show him and he'll just be looking into the camera and kind of smirking and like even through the camera and the TV screen, you're sitting there like, oh, if I have a soul, he's looking into it right now. I mean, Stephen King is a fucking genius, but yeah, he's afraid of the dark. Not, I'm actually, you know, I'm big on. I don't have time to read while I'm at work. I listen to a lot of audio books. Yeah, his uh, book on writing, I forget, might might be what it's called, writing on writing. You know, talks about he kind of tells his story. You know, it's like Carrie when he wrote Carrie. Which why was Carrie so fucking terrifying? When he it came does out? not remember writing. He was so whacked out on coke and fucking alcohol. He I don't understand why that movie was like not allowed to be played in theaters and like it was, was it like North Carolina. I don't think it was that fucking great. I, no, I mean I, I like Carrie the movie, but it's not fucking terrifying. It's creepy. I mean, it's just telekinesis is all it is. Yeah, it's basically poltergeist activity. It's Stranger Things, right? I She's mean, eleven. That's like Cujo and Pet Cemetery. I, no, Pet Cemetery is Pet Cemetery is hokey scary, right? But it wasn't. Whereas, I will say, you know what movie? Even the remake is kind of unnerving during the right parts of it. The Evil Dead. I've never seen it. Okay. you never seen Evil Dead? It's a so. fucking classic. I don't think so. The first one from the 80s was pretty fucking good. And the remake that they made sometime oh, was like 10 years. I think I've seen the classic. Not- Dude, the remake was... I even like... I, I like the remake better just because there's... A, one, there's a fucking... The, the contacts that they put in their eyes... When she gets possessed, are fucking sick, and they're they're always just zooming in on her eyes while she's like looking through the floorboards and shit, and it's just fucking terrifying. Hmm. And there's a scene where she fucking takes a box cutter and she just goes, and she runs her tongue up it and fucking just slices her tongue oh, in half. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. That's what we have to do. 
we'll pick one movie. Or we could just for- have a Patreon pick the movie. Tyler's the newest one. Tyler, Tyler, Tyler pick you pick a movie and you send uh, either either Facebook or Instagram, send us a message. You pick a movie, we're going to watch it, and we will do a whole Patreon episode talking about talking about the movie and discussing it, whether we thought it was awesome, great, hokey, shitty. I pissed my pants, shit myself, that kind of shit. Oh, you ain't got to get that. Well, well, I love that shit, though. I've, like, I, was, I was like the only kid that... You know, actually would be actually kind of cool. Actually, we'll watch it here. With headphones on. With so headphones on get... and kind of just, you know, commentate during it. That would actually be pretty cool. Right. Bruce Campbell. You know, I was never a big Bruce Campbell fan. Was the Evil Dead? I know. Evil. That's why when you said Evil Dead, I was like, oh yeah. Damn, the remake was made in 2013. It was yeah. that long ago. But yeah, no, I like. I I, like I think that, that's good. that that the remake of Evil Dead might be one of the only remakes I've ever seen that I like more. It, it it's just it's just because of it's just special effects. <laughs> Like the shit that they tried to pull well, off. Are they it doing was, this Exorcist re- redoing the Exorcist yeah, again? Yeah, this year. Yeah. I mean, which I think the story could be better with special effects. Maybe. I don't know. That, that, I don't know. Okay, we got anything else we're pushing to? Oh, no. I've, I've, I'm, I've been done. All right. Army of the Dead. I've not seen it. I've heard of it. Really? You've never seen I've Army never of the seen. Dead? Like I said, Bruce came It's like up. saying you've never seen The Princess Bride. I've seen the Princess Bride. Oh, okay. Anybody want a peanut? Some of Andre the Giant's finest work. God. Some of Andre the Giant's only work? <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I saying? I just, Bruce Campbell, I was just, Evil Dead, I Where are you coming it. from, you little fucker? She probably, well, I thought she pissed on the floor, but it was, it was where you set that refrigerator down. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it's leaking something from uh, somewhere. But, uh, even Bruce Campbell, I was just not a big fan of it. I mean, it was all right. It's funny. Now on Burn Notice, I loved him. Yeah, I mean, they, 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 that, that, like Army of the Dead was funny. I'll give it that. It was kind of hokey road warrior kind of shit. Yeah, you know, that kind of you know that kind of feel or vibe. Yeah. Thing. All right, we are going to uh, get out of here. I hope you enjoyed this Ed Gein special, the true crime. I mean, like I said, I was just looking forward to listing off all that shit that they found. I mean, he was fucking crazy. He, yeah. There was no doubt. Which it, is what, like, that's way scarier than, than somebody that killed 12 people. You know what I mean? Like, somebody that just killed people. Like, the BTK killer. I don't really understand why he's such a big deal. I mean, everybody hates to die. Nobody wants to die. Yeah, it's because we all I'm, pompous assholes. I'm big. I want body counts, baby. I want a body count. That's what I'm saying. I've always thought that. I was like, dude, if I'm gonna, if I make the decision to, that I'm gonna kill somebody, like you might as well go for it. I'm going full. Like you've four. already done the the thing that you sh- you're not supposed to do, according to most people. Even though I'm not saying that I am going to go kill somebody. I don't have the urge to kill another human. But I think people forget that it is at our core. We survive are, but in a survival mode we are animals yes people forget that we are fucking animals yeah we're no different than a dog or a fucking hyena and everybody's gonna be like that's a dog no it's not look it up hyenas are not dogs they are oh. not canids they are from the same family as mongooses and servals and shit and once again we went all nerdville that's what i do i know that's why I, that's why i love i you. listen to a whole two-hour podcast about plate tectonics it's actually really interesting did you know that a lot of the, our ideas of plate tectonics are not true. The there is not a space between the continental plates all the time, like everybody thinks there is. What's Brian have to say? BTK was a big deal, probably because of his communicating with. Ah, well, yeah, he, yeah, because he's an idiot. He, he was a bragger. He's an idiot. What was the? Let, he sent a floppy disk to him, thinking that they wouldn't be able to fucking trace it. Well, who, who, which killer was the uh, the one with the crypt, the uh, ciphers? Oh fuck! Zodiac. Zodiac killer. Did they did they crack those ciphers here recently? 
Not entirely. Oh, I thought they... I know they cracked... They're getting closer to it. Okay. They haven't answered all the questions, though. I don't think they ever will. I'd be surprised if what they thought they found is even accurate at this point. Because that shit is so well done. It's not like that bullshit that, like, prison gangs use and shit. What, urine? (laughs) No. Well, they do do that. I know. But no, like, the Aryan Brotherhood would, like, write to each other in, uh, like, Celtic or, or, uh, like, old, um... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like Nordic languages and shit like that. And then they did have a, a cipherable code for a while, but they'd fucking crack that too. There's something, I don't know what I, cause I honestly, I think a lot of the Zodiac shit is just fucking made up. Very well. Could be. I think they're just, they're just chasing a non-existent rabbit at this point. Oh, just for a little recap before we get out of here. Runes. That's what it is. Tyler's clearly racist. Uh, and he's from Alabama. You're not looking too good there, bud. I'm just kidding. Uh, just for uh, a touch up on last week's episode, I did not get possessed. Travis, did you get possessed? <sighs> nope. The Ouija board is hanging on the wall. Literally nothing happened, just like I said. It was, of course, you know, it wasn't the right atmosphere i will say i mean that. dude we can we sit here without the live stream burn candles all that shit as far as i'm concerned still ain't dick gonna happen we dicked off but dick. we've talked about this nothing's gonna happen when i do one of these fucking things because i don't fucking believe in them i just need to find i think i'm gonna glue the uh i think we should get a bigger one i think we're gonna, well we gotta release but i'm gonna get other shit i'm gonna fill it up i think the book well, plus if we once we move it if we get something put a sign here and move this up well, the reflection <laughs> won't be so bad on it um Plus, uh, I want to go all to Ed Gein and get some shrunken heads and shit and hang on the wall. And like the fucking... A lampshade. The double-decker bus from Harry Potter? No. He said, sit down, man. I want a lampshade made of skin, so... I didn't even think to look at that. I was on Amazon today. I spent so much money on Amazon today. For that goddamn wedding. Oh, yeah. I want to look good, though. But I did not get possessed. I did have an interesting... If you were a patron, you would know what happened. You found a fucking snake. After the episode, in the house, Satan... We talked about the Ouija tapestry. We talked about it, but I don't want to take... I want to put different things. That would just take up the whole fucking wall. Well, that's... I was thinking, like, once we start getting it all put together, I think the Ouija tapestry would be a cool backdrop for all the other shit. But it would be... Because you can get it for, like... You know, I can get one for, like, eight bucks, so we can put holes in it to hang stuff on on it shit. It'd be too... Mm. Or, you know what would be cool is if we could get a tapestry without the lettering and shit. Which is like the outside border of a Ouija board. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. But, you know, but I also want to, you know, like, I want or to I mean, believe fuck, we could poster. Fucking you know, decal. Wait, I want, what? I want to believe poster. Oh, I thought you said I want to get a weed poster. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? All right. I'm saying next Monday I'm getting stoned before this podcast. I'm down. We've said that every time. I've been rolling some mean uh, Well, you have to get here before fucking 9 o'clock. Fair enough. (laughs) Tell you what, next week we will get baked before the podcast if we get here at 7. If I'm I'm smoking, I'm not drinking. Oh, no. What the fuck? I'm not driving home when I crossfade. I'd be out. If we did both, I'd be passed out on the keyboard by fucking. We got to get a good fucking time. It's got to be like a conspiracy or an alien thing or something like that. So we can be like, no, man, I'm telling you, man. It's the fucking government, man. It's the fake birds. Putin's been dead since 94, man. He's a fucking robot. Putin? Don't fuck with Putin, man. Fuck Putin. It's a bad motherfucker. That's, That's fine. He doesn't give a fuck what we do. Uh, yeah, but he doesn't give a fuck what we do. Therefore, I don't give a fuck what he does. Go ride a horse shirtless, uh, you cock. Did you hear he's calling out Zuckerberg and all the Facebook for what? You know, promoting child porn. He said, "Do that." Sh- I I don't know if it could be fake news. I didn't see the little possible fake news thing, so I don't know. He said, "You keep pushing that shit." We're taking you the fuck out. And Putin, when he says taking you the fuck out, does not mean he's going to ruin your business. He's KGB. It means he's going to take you out with an umbrella with needle. I don't know. They better pull that shit off real well. 
let's face it, Facebook needs to go. Without oh. Facebook, there's no Instagram. Fuck Instagram. That leaves us with Twitter. I like Twitter. I get more. Pic- We're pushing more- 2,600 followers. Yeah, baby. but I still get more movement on our Instagram than our Twitter. Yeah, I know. Uh, like by him far. Twitter. I don't know why. Instagram is pissing. Well, I mean, I just got on Twitter too, so everybody on Twitter is not used to our page being a meme. Follow us on Twitter page. at night underscore ghost. On uh, Instagram, ghost underscore night underscore podcast. Ghost of the night Facebook, but Facebook. Ghost of the night on YouTube. Subscribe ghost to of the, the night podcast. on Pornhub. Travis, big sexy OnlyFans. Have they shut that shit down yet? I don't know. We need to do TikTok though. I'm already on it. For the podcast? Mm-hmm. What do we got? Nothing yet. No, I'm not already on. I'm not I'm already on like the ball's already moved rolling. Well, you're gonna have to because that's for like I've thought about using TikTok for like clips. Oh, we're gonna do that too. You know, to push push to push. Yeah, we're gonna do that too, and then we're gonna have like nineteen and twenty year old girls in corpse paint and shit doing stupid fucking dances for us because that's what everybody wants to see that's what all the middle aged guys are like <laughs> what the fuck are you doing how many 19, I'm pooping honey how many 19, 18 and 19 year old girls do you know and I do I don't even know if I want to know this answer do you know where I work oh that's right yeah exactly The fuck you mean? Act like if we do this I shit, do your wanna... daughter is not going to be like, Dad, I can do that too. And I won't be like, yeah, get your little ass in here. Get us more likes. My daughter will not be doing this. I'm not talking about putting them in bikinis and shit. It's going to be tasteful. It's just that's what people want to see. Bite your tongue, motherfucker. You I already be... said she was hot. I'll have to tell Tyler that story one of these days. Not tonight, but <laughs> that's, that, dude, that story is still so uncomfortably hilarious to me. What was uncomfortable when I told her while you were sitting at the bar and we walked by and I I said, I told her the story how you said she was hot. And you went, I've never seen you blush. I didn't know Asians could blush. It's not blushing, it's brushing. Oh, brushing. I had the the brush of the... Uh, Like the girl on Instagram saying English words in Japanese. Bug, I can get it. So we have a TikTok account? Not yet. I haven't made it. I was seeing if I could get the uh, talent. But I'd also, to do that, and plus put, like, clips of the video, you know, like, little minute clips of... Oh, yeah. Because at some point, we're going to play one of these people's uh, YouTube trailers. I told her to play her trailer when she oh. starts her YouTube channel. Who? Oh, I'm... After... Tell me after. Um, Bartender sister. Okay. Yeah. Uh, She's, dude... Because she... Excuse me, I just into the mic hard. I might try to bring her in as a producer. She was showing me her little edit that she was doing on her phone for their for her first video with him, her butt hand. And like, she's like, she's got good timing well, with like he, clipping and then just like that, straight into this moment. You know what I mean? Like, she's got, she's really good at that shit. Well, I would like to have a, the pace. A young up, Jamie. But. Get there another, is no pay. Get another one of those cameras and have one like Sarah, me, one there, you, and then this one. Mm-hmm. You know, that way when I'm talking, you know. I try not to burp in the mic now, but that one just. Oh, fuck it. It's, we're two hours into this. Who gives a shit? But, you know, that way, you know, when I'm talking, that somebody can work the camera. It's just too much for me to do. I mean, theoretically, I could do it. But. But you'd I, literally be spending half the show just staring at the fucking monitor and clicking. Right. Yeah. But that way we have three. That's cameras. why I don't like I want to send you video clips and pictures and shit, but it would it would take away from the it's a two man show. You know what right. I mean? Like if we wanted to do that, it would just be you or me hosting and then the other one doing all that shit. Hold on a minute. Tyler, uh horror or scary? I mean suspenseful. I mean that's, uh, that's like for, silence of the well, it, it's it's spoopy season. It's October. I say, yeah, I think we should do a horror like movie s- of some sort. Silence or a thriller. The, silence of the Lamb is a scary movie, but not a scary movie. You know It's a psychological thriller. Right. Psychological thriller like or horror. Yeah, because it's October. 
But I'm think, gonna drink a pumpkin spice latte while I watch it. But we need to think. Here's what we need. We need to, you know, we're gonna get recommendations from the Patreons, or even if somebody, anybody is in this podcast or chat room that is not a Patreon subscriber, you can uh, send us. God, we gotta pull that light back a little bit next week. Yeah, it's a little bright on me. Yeah, yeah, I didn't bring it. I th- uh, but send us a GITM podcast email at gmail.com. Or, you know, we'll do that. Or maybe, whatever. Maybe next we'll week. We'll get it pretty much wherever you send it. Homework for you. Let's think of a topic for our Halloween show on Sunday. Let's try to make Sunday Halloween happen. And I'd like to do it. Salem Witch Trials? I'd like to do it fairly early because I want to get the fuck out of here before trick or treat. Or we do it and get hammered drunk while trick or treaters are. Fuck off! No, not in this fucking name. Remember I told earlier, I said you could draw a half mile radius circle around all this place and get somebody with a bigger body count than fucking Ed Gein? Mm-hmm. I don't want to end up dead. Because tr- the tr- trick on these trick-or-treaters is an Ed Gein. It's bullet fucking holes. That's funny because I don't see you handing out candy. I mean... Do you just leave the bowl out front? No, I would. I mean, I do. I have. You just sit on the front porch and smoke cigarettes, don't you? No, I mean, I haven't done it in years. I, 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 like, I like doing that shit. Like, previous... I, cause I, like, I might be an asshole. I, li- I've, I love kids. I don't kids. mind it. I like kids. I mean, like my previous residence, I did do it. But I didn't have to all the time because we had other kids there that wanted yeah. to do it as well. Yeah. So I didn't have well, plus, to. Plus, like, if we're being real, in an area like this, it's more satisfying. Because in, in cause we're not in like the hardcore burbs anymore, right? Like around here, like yeah, that's a like in in when you get closer to a city, it's a big fucking deal for kids. They get to go out and have fun and get right. candy from everybody, and they're not like, where do I get yelled at by the meth head neighbor? You know what I'm saying? So we need to come up with a topic. I mean, <laughs> Salem witch trials is a good concept. I mean, I would I'd stick. With, I've done Halloween. You know the. Halloween thing episode, you know. We could get, I mean, we could even do ghost stories off of Reddit, or something like that. Cut these lights and just have flashlights on us. But I, we gotta do costumes. I'm down. Costumes. I'm down. You know what I'm doing? Zach Baggins. <laughs> no. That'd be hilarious. Just get the biggest fuck off glasses you can get. And I, which I feel like a dick making fun of him for that because I know those glasses have an actual medical purpose. Like, I actually feel bad about giving him shit about those. We do it out of love. But <laughs> we need we, we need to think about costumes. We'll make it work. We got to get the fuck out of here. All right. It's, we're we're out. two hours and 15 minutes. Thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight for the live stream. For all the audio listeners, be sure to. Tyler, I'll get back to you on Instagram. Like I said, it. it, it Today was the first time I've been on Instagram in a couple of days to put that post up, and then it literally died as soon as I put the fucking foot post up. If you're listening to this, be sure to follow us. If you're watching it, be sure to subscribe. Be sure. Ooh, excuse me. I traversed it. It happens. That semen, that uh, Satan semen is coming back up. Beelzecum. Beelzecum. Uh, thank you for watching. If you are watching this or you like what we do here, be sure to share this on all your social medias that way because we are growing i mean we are getting more even audio you see all those numbers i see twitter instagram and youtube that's all i see the audio is picking up a little bit more we kind of sagged a little there in the summertime we're in the top 150 in canada though Uh, we're in top 125 i think in france we were what the fuck in france probably we have a certain je ne sais quoi. Two days ago, we were in the top 150 of... If you do not listen to our podcast, you will put it me out. We were in the top 150 of U.S., France, Canada. And I think we were back in Australia, too. I think there was four. We were... Hmm. We were up. Now, we, we're still in France, so I think we dropped a little bit. Yeah, I checked the Instagram insights. It, I think it was New York. New York took the, our number one spot for percentage of well, uh, traffic on really? our Instagram. Yeah. yeah. By like 0.3%, which sounds negligible, but like we're talking on Instagram, like uh, for the longest time, it was a four way tie between Melbourne, London, Manchester, and the city we live in at 1.2% of our. And let's be honest, the city we traffic. live in, it's just us watching. Yeah. <laughs> but 
how we grow and how we have these little spikes and is when you share this on your social media that does a wonder so please share this we would greatly appreciate it follow subscribe especially on youtube we are what 375 on youtube i think some now. shit like that you know turn us on your take your phones friends phones shove it you know turn us on shove it up their ass make them listen to us i would like to get to a thousand we our goal was to get to a thousand by the end of the year i never never like have you ever seen five old no the uh, an american tale with little mouse neville said neville again Bible. We're not going to get to the thousand by the end of the year. Never but, say never, Phil. But with each new one, we appreciate all of you. And if you do subscribe to us, be sure to send us an email or come join us the live stream or comment. Um, that's we will answer as long as you're nice and pleasant. If you say something stupid, we might ignore you. Or you get we, a better answer if you're not pleasant. If really. you say something dumb and derogatory, we will not. You'll get like respond. three weeks worth of answer. We will blow you up during a recording because that's what we do. Because we're immature little fucks. Well, and it's also the fact that everybody that tries to say some shit about us, like that's your opinion and that's fine. But a, you're wrong. B, none of them ever come with the heat that they need to. If you come at me. On the comments on our YouTube channel or our RSS feed, that's fine, and I respect your ability to do that. But I feel like you're disrespecting my ability to clap back at you way harder because they all come weak as fuck. They're immature and offensive. Yeah, well, you gargle fucking demon cum while you butt fuck your mom with your dad's dick, and he died two years ago, so go fuck yourself, Raymond. There was not a Raymond, just so everybody knows. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not throwing out names. No, but we do. I, I don't even mind hate. I fucking love hate because guess what? If you hate us, means you watch us, motherfucker. No press is bad press. Yeah. But be sure to share. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to hit the like button. Uh, that is the best way to do it. And sharing is the most important. So we are out of here. Thank you so much for joining us for the live stream. Thank you for following us. Thank you for doing everything that you do. If you want to subscribe, to the Patreon and support the podcast for a minuscule fee like Tyler, $2. Emma, and some other people and get some of the bonus Bree. episodes. Bree, our researcher, uh, get some of the bonus episodes that we do. One went out the other day when we talked about the uh, Ouija board session. I told what happened about the snake on that. That is real small little fee. I think it's two bucks is the lowest one. Get mm -hmm. you all that bonus information or bonus content that's patreon.com slash GITM podcast. We will see you next Monday. We don't we know, don't know the subject. What? We don't have a subject. Well, maybe we'll look into the uh, Ohio werewolf like Tyler was talking about. I'm done. I think maybe we're going to try to do the Ohio werewolf or defiance werewolf. And he's been around for long enough that he knows that even when it's our episode, there's still going to be 45 minutes of other random shit that is unrelated. But Tyler, we might do your episode next week. Uh, we will know more by uh, the end of the week. I have to look at it and see how much material there is. I mean, we can make an episode. We can at least make a segment of an episode right. out of it. So we will see you next Monday at eight o'clock ish. I brought you a fridge. Fuck off. That's why I love you. We will see you next Monday. Take care, everybody. Love you. <laughs>